showers in western counties. Continuing dry then tonight with severe frost in places, lows of between 0 and minus 3 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This this is News Talk. So we're just over 90 minutes away now until kickoff between Ireland and England in the Guinness Six Nations Championship. We'll be across to the Aviva Stadium between now and then. And we're on air all the way through until 7 o'clock this evening, bringing you through full time. Johnny Murphy is there for us. I almost said Johnny Ward. He is a rugby man now, so there is a possibility that he may turn up reporting on rugby matches in the future. If there's money in it, it'll be there. Well, I see Michael O'Leary won the big race at uh, Leopardstown today and then said afterwards he was at the rugby. And I'm just sort of wondering, is it possible that Johnny actually isn't at Leopardstown today? He's gone to the rugby. No, I did see him on the screen he earlier got on. the physical proof, yeah. He was looking at his phone, so we could have had like a, a, a taxi ordered right. just to take him away. Is there, is there any sport where journalists pop up on TV more than horse racing? Oh, you see them, you see them all in the background. Like like Philip, like Philip Quinn. Is, Philip, Quinn, Philip Quinn, is the, Quinn is a genius at it. He's, he's unbelievably he, busy he, in the parade ring after the race. He moves then, into know? shot and then he sort of hides behind somebody, but you always know he's there. Yeah, you can hear him. Proper journalist. You can hear him sort of chatting away in the background it's you know? the oh, I, I don't want to be on the telly here but if it just so happens that uh, I, I happen know, to I, be yeah, yeah. It's, a coincidence. Be yeah. It's, only, it's only a matter of time before Johnny is sponsored while he's walking through the parade ring in the background <laughs> so like you know Johnny's just going to be there in the that's back. a I, great idea actually why don't you why well, haven't you got onto this you know you that is a great off idea off the ball off, branding on his yes, like exactly for some reason why is he why is he wearing a, a top hat of some kind <laughs> in the background <laughs> it's like minus two that's the well, thing like, he needs like John, Johnny has, has a good character but he could develop a character. Mm. He could be the guy so like, he becomes famous over in Britain because of this. Oh, there's your man with the top hat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's, you know, like, like Payne's shirt and his golf clothes back yeah. in the day. Johnny could have his own attire. Yeah, yeah exactly. Off the yeah. ball logos like on everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah. In, in a way. Two enigmatic figures <laughs> in their own way, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the similarities end. Bit harsh. Uh, uh, Johnny <laughs> is with us then in studio today. He's at the uh, Dublin Racing Festival where yes. Apple's Jade has won the Irish Champion Hurdle. We'll run you through the rest of the results very shortly. In the Six Nations, Scotland 12, Italy 3. Uh, we have replaced Johnny Ward, uh, Morden Abley, with Shane Keegan. How are you? Not too bad at all yourself. Very well. I very was well. Uh, texting the man himself earlier on there, all right. I was. Tell him I was absolutely de- delighted to be now typecast as a Johnny Ward substitute. <laughs> <laughs> you could aim for higher aspirations in life, but however. You could, you it's could. First but line in therapy of some kind, you know. Yeah. I, I knew I was in trouble when I was Johnny Ward. <laughs> <laughs> for a day, yeah. That was the moment when I realised I had to reevaluate. Are, we're going downhill. Yeah. People are obviously focusing on the racing, on the rugby, but there's also a busy day in the Premier League as well. Five games just underway at three o'clock. Earlier, Spurs beat Newcastle by a goal to nil. Cardiff Bournemouth is the late game. We'll be talking you through all of those, some of the talking points of the week as well. We always like you to get in touch, 53106 on text. We're live on all our social channels. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, if you want to leave a comment for the lads. And we'll bring you through the championship scores as well. I think I've stolen your thunder, Shane, by pretty much giving every score that's, everything. that's currently that's happening. Everything. I just walk out here. Uh, that's right. fine. But uh, no, we'll have to start with the rugby. There's a bit of a rugby audio to bring you. Just under two hours, in fact, an hour and uh, 45 minutes left until Ireland faced England in the Six Nations Championship at the Aviva Stadium. Uh, the Irish team was named earlier this week and uh, Joe Schmidt has been uh, this week assessing his counterparts. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it really affects them too much. You know, when Wales were, were, were going well and, and winning championships, uh, their teams weren't really qualifying very often at all. I think Ospreys qualified once um, and apart from that, they weren't really qualifying. It was post the Scarlets era where they made those semis. So... You know, I, I do think that the two aren't necessarily closely linked. We'd like to think they're closely linked for us because we've got four teams in those playoffs and, and teams that have worked really hard to get to where they are and they've been well coached and, and, and well prepared to, to get to where they are. And, uh, you know, we hope that there's a little bit of a positive spin for us in, in that respect. But I don't think for a moment that, uh, that the England team as a, a national team will be affected by by clubs not qualifying. We have the first goal of the three o'clock kickoffs in the Premier League. It's coming the catchily titled Ireland Potential Right Back Derby between Everton and Wolves at Goodison Park. Paul Anthony. 
It's Everton nil, Wolves won seven minutes into the game and Leighton Baines tripping up Doherty in the area, upstepped uh, Rubens Neves and he slotted it into the bottom corner. Early lead for Wolves, Everton nil, Wolves won. A giant tick beside Paul Anthony's name, correct pronunciation of Matt Doherty. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> well done, Paul. Yeah, no, like not the old... He's gone from Doherty to Doherty in places, and now he's he's dot Doherty. We're back. I don't know how many ways you can get one man's name wrong, really, isn't it? It's, it's quite remarkable. But yet again, making an impact. Uh, can we have another conversation of <laughs> Seamus Coleman v Matt Doherty again? Will this be the last time they're on the pitch together? Uh, he's in the opposing penalty area, at least you know. But um, yeah, I mean, I I don't know how Shane feels about this. I mean, everyone's had their say in this to some degree. I think there's probably a way you can get them both into the have, side. They have to, to, be, to, have to be both got into the side. Do you see Doherty then? Coleman plays right back. Do you see Doherty as the left back, or do you see Doherty as a potential right side of midfielder? Oh, I I love to see it tried as a three-five-two and have the two of them possibly combining on on the right so hand side Coleman of that. At the right of a back on the right three. of a three and Doherty on the right of a five. But it, it's it's I don't think Mick I, don't, I can't ever remember having seen Mick ever using a, a three at the back before. To be but honest, he did it. Didn't so. he, did he play Roy Keane and one mm. back in his first he, campaign? Yeah. The time the time Keane was, was booed right. against Iceland, wasn't he in the back of a three-five-two? I think he played it for a bit of that campaign with Ian Hart as well. I think mm. and then I think it was abandoned thereafter you know yeah. so I mean there, certainly in terms of his club career I, I can't think of anything maybe someone out there could remember who's followed Ipswich yeah. or Sunderland closely but he did try it with Ireland I, I, I wonder what the, the logic for that was we actually would have been fairly top heavy with full backs at the time between you know Gary yeah, Kelly yeah. and Erwin and, 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 and Staunton and all those players so um, he has he, ha, he has done it but uh, you, you still feel it's more likely it's going to be Doherty on the right of a you know, four five one or whatever you you know, whatever sort of hybrid of four two three one, whatever you want to call it. You can see that's where he would play. I think rather than being a left back, I'm not sure if that's. Well, see, yeah, I spoke to, to Hunt, Stephen Hunt about it before because Hunt had argued that he's excellent at left back. Mm. I mean, supposedly he played you know an awful lot mm. there in previous the seasons for them in the championship. Puts in and yeah, he can be effective. Um, but one way or another, I think the both have to be found a, a way for the two of them. Yeah, it's hard to you know? see how. They both don't start. It'd be madness. Well, it's that. also. I mean, Mick has a relationship with Doherty. I mean, he mm, brought him yeah. over to England. You know, he'll he'll. You know, Matt is probably idiosyncratic in some ways. You know, he's a unique enough character. Um, but Mick obviously has managed him and knows him, and I think that'll help in terms of their relationship. And and you know, Matt probably, as he said, his face maybe didn't fit before, but I think his face will very much fit with this manager. The type of lad who probably isn't wearing gloves today. Doherty? Oh, it's but, but we'll be in the middle of summer. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I get I completely you get what I'm saying. Yes. Uh, so, Wolves are 1-0 up in that game at Goodison Park. I would be very interested in the reaction at half-time if it stays like that and the pressure that's starting to come on Marco Silva. We rudely interrupted you, Shane. You're fine. All good. Uh, so, we were listening to Joe Schmidt uh, reflecting on England uh, this week. Uh, the Irish team, I guess the big news from this week, from the 15, was Robbie Henshaw being picked at full-back for that match against England at the Viva Stadium at 4.45 this afternoon. The Leicester Centre is starting at 15 for Ireland for the first time in over five years. While Jordan Larmer is on the bench, Gary Ringrose and Bundiaki are in midfield with Keith Earls and Jacob Stockdale on the wings. Conor Murray and Johnny Sexton are the halfbacks. Kean Healy, Captain Rory Best and Tyke Furlong form the front row. Devin Toner and James Ryan are the second row with Peter Mahoney, Josh van der Fleer and CJ Stander in the back row. Meanwhile, for the England team then, Elliot Daly has held off the challenge of Mike Brown at fullback and has been named in Eddie Jones' starting 15. Manny Tuolagi has been selected at inside centre where he has played a little rugby to make his first Six Nations start in six years following an injury-blighted spell, profiting from Ben Teo's side strain. Henry Slade continues at 13. Jack Nowell lines up on the left wing and Owen Farrell resumes his halfback partnership with Ben Youngs. The only surprise in the pack is the absence of Joe Launchbury. He's recovered from the knee injury that forced him to miss the autumn but is unable to even win a place on the England bench. George Cruz is preferred as Maro Toje's partner in the second row while Prop Mako Vinopola and number 8 Billy Vinopola are back after recovering from their respective calf and arm injuries. Replacement scrum half Dan Robson is the only uncapped player in the 23 with the starting 15 containing a total of 485 caps. England head coach Eddie Jones has been speaking this week and assessing his starting 15. We obviously wanted to pick Ben Teo. The other option we had was moving Owen to 12 and George to 10. Just feel for this game the best option is to play Owen at 10 and a like for like with Benny Teo with Manu and Manu's impressed us at the training camp and is right to play. It's nice to have Mako and Billy back. Mako is obviously a world-class loose head. Missed him during the autumn series but he's come back and he's in good nick and he's really committed to be the best he can be. And Billy, uh, we haven't had him for a long time. Uh, one test in South Africa, I think over the last two seasons, 
He's come back, he's in great nick, he's ready to play well for us. Yeah, England head coach Eddie Jones speaking ahead of the 4.45 kickoff. Uh, just to mention as well, of course, the Ireland women's sevens, we should give them a mention. They've guaranteed themselves a first ever top four finish as they defeated Spain 22-7 overnight in the quarterfinal in Sydney. It'll be Ireland's first ever semi-final appearance when they host face hosts Australia. That's tonight at 10.56pm Irish time. Uh, this morning's win also sees them finish as the top European side in the competition. 19-year-old Eve Higgins claimed Ireland's first score against Spain. Uh, Captain Lucy Mulhall converted to make it 7-0. Amy Lee Murphy Crow then went over for her fifth, fifth try of the tournament with Mulhall converting. And then well-worked team try followed Hannah Tyrrell and McGann both carrying smartly to attract defenders. The ball was worked to Murphy Crow, who had some work to do, but her hard work ensured she closed day two as leading try scorer at the Sydney Sevens. I'm bringing you some update from the golf as well as Saudi International. Uh, Paul Dunn has finished his round with a, uh, a 70 in his third round. That leaves him in a tie for 36th position. Uh, he is uh, 13 shots behind the uh, joint leaders Dustin Johnson and China's Li Hao Tong, who are on 16 under. Those leaders are five ahead of Tom Lewis, who is uh, on 11 under par, but uh, uh, incredible 62 from Li Hao Tong today. Uh, so Dustin Johnson, 65, uh, does not give him the outright lead. Did you see the main story out of this today? Sergio, Sergio. Sergio. Yeah. Mm. disqualified for serious misconduct. Uh, he basically said that in frustration, I damaged a couple of greens, which I apologize for. Now, reading up on this, um, several people there saying that it was five different greens mm. that he basically dug up. And doing, doing Happy Gilmore Pro there, isn't he? Exactly. Uh, so, listen, he's uh, clearly lost it. And we sort of thought that this new, more mature Sergio, maybe those days, were behind him. It'll be interesting to see what sort of punishment comes out of and this. And other players complaining as well. Mm. You know, it's sort of... Now, I, I, even, when you're in Saudi Arabia... It's hard to take a high moral stance if you're the European Tour on... No, this is the thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, we have to think about the... Uh, did, did Sergio's actions damage the so reputation <laughs> of the game? Is this bad for the game of golf, what he, what he did there? I it's mean, kind of like suing for libel or slander. If the person doesn't have a reputation to protect, mm, how mm. can you damage it? Yeah, there, there is certainly, if they, if they come in and take a strong stance on this, they'll say, this is bringing the game of golf into disrepute. I mean, some of like mm. Bryson DeChambeau and a couple of the other videos this have week. You seen, you, have you I've seen the video of Bryson DeChambeau? Oh. So obviously this is um, a very controversial move by the European Tour to play this tournament in Saudi Arabia, yeah. which was arranged for seven or eight months. But since the murder of the journalist, even still, they were, listen, it's a business decision. Loads of people do business in Saudi Arabia. We really don't care. You've got four of the world's top five playing, all of whom are getting massive appearance money, seven-figure oh, appearance money. Uh, Justin Rose, the world number one, taking the line. I'm a, I'm a sports person. I'm not a politician. I'm not getting involved in this. Ian Poulter basically saying, I'm not smart enough to understand what's going on, so I just <laughs> ignore it. All of them quite literally putting their heads in the sand about this. Yeah. And it's... Pretty despicable. Bryson like. talking about Saudi Arabia like it might be like uh, it's like Hawaii somewhere. Mm. You know, it's like he's, he's like he's gone to some island. So they, some he he said, I'd like to thank the European Tour for all they're doing for the game, expanding it to parts of the world that we haven't been to before. And I just want to say, Saudi Arabia, what an incredible place for opening it up and showing, letting the rest of the world in to see this beauty of this country. Was so there just, visible dollar signs in his eyes as he was talking? <laughs> 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 it's, it's just that's just the tour of, of what they do, you know. Mm. So I remember when I was in Bucharest years ago for uh, Steyr Bucharest against St. Pat's, and we got this wonderful tour of Bucharest. But the, like the tour guide was telling us this story about how Michael Jackson was there one time, and then just walked out in front of the maddening crowd and said, "Hello, Budapest, everybody." <laughs> it's just like this is this is Bryson is just like so. Where am I? Where am I this yeah. week on the European tour appearance? Monitor? And, and you know the well, thing is that we obviously get very annoyed about. Roy McIlroy maybe not playing in the Irish Open and I hope that Roy McIlroy does play in the Irish Open but I think apparently I think it's in one of his issues that the European Tour is playing like big appearance money fees to some of these American guys mm. to come and play some of their Middle East events and do you know when you think about it in some ways well like, it's not the European Tour who are paying well sorry fees, I take a point it's the organisers of the competitions but um it just you know it, it, it sits a bit uncomfortably with you in some way because I mean okay they're not they're not paying the appearance fees I I, I take that point but they're still using them in all their promotional videos and and oh. you know thank you to the European Tour mm. for, for for growing the game 
Well, and the reason it is said. South Africa are hosting, or Saudi Arabia, sorry, are hosting this is quite simply as an advertisement for the country to mm. give the appearance that it's a perfectly normal working country that people should come and visit. And I, re I read something recently they want to do some, they want to expand some of their tourism mm. in Saudi Arabia. That's an you, interesting you, strategy. You, you should go and check that out then. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think I'm sure members of the media would be well up for that. Eddie Pepperell, uh, who is a um, English golfer and generally quite an interesting character, writes a, a blog, sort of, has had a very good couple of years, got into the world's top 50, but was a journeyman for quite a while, but sort of slightly different personality, which there aren't too many in golf. And he made a couple of jokes about this. He's in Saudi Arabia, which were not funny for starters, oh. but... A couple of journalists, Lawrence Donegan, who's a regular on the show included, sort of said, listen, this isn't worth joking about. He wrote a blog where he sort of outlined some of the issues. Again, he tried to make a joke of it and part of it saying, listen, true suffering, there always has to be humour. It's like, no, there oh, doesn't. Please. But he was making the point of the criticism of him playing, saying, listen, I'm not one of these big stars. If I don't play, somebody else takes my place and nobody takes any notice. I don't want him to take that stand. And also, the one maybe valid point is, well, if we play in, don't play in Saudi Arabia, why are we playing in China? Why are we playing in Russia? Why are we playing in the United States? Why are we playing in other parts of the Middle East? Why are we playing in Qatar? Like, Has there's not many tournaments left. By playing in the Irish Open, are you endorsing the government's policy on homelessness? No, you're not. Have, but, have, have you noticed where FIFA are playing their next World Cup, by the way? Like, well, exactly, you know? yeah. but yeah. I think I that's underestimating point, yeah. where Saudi Arabia is in terms of human rights yeah. right now. Yeah, no, but I, I do want, I, I mean, Pepperell has graduated above Journeyman Pro now. Mm. I think, to be fair, they're using them in some of their promotional stuff, but I do take the point of the struggling. I'm not sure who's in the, the field, but I'm sure there's lads down the bottom. I can sort of understand that that's their Well, also, this is one of the, can't, you know, the biggest tournaments on yeah. the European Tour now for world ranking points because you have four of the world's top five there mm. so listen it's all just excuses Paul Casey came out and said I wouldn't play because of the human rights issue Tiger Woods I think even Tiger Woods said it took didn't take him long to think no I'm not going and I think there's lots of other top players who just haven't wanted to make an issue of it no. like, that's the thing with this you don't need to be Colin Kaepernick by not playing. You can just say, I'm not playing. You wouldn't find too many Colin Kaepernicks in the American golf fraternity. No, no, that's To be fair, is, to be that fair is for sure. I think they'd be a, some distance away from that. <laughs> yeah. A long drive away from that, I'd have thought, you know? Uh, sorry, went off a slight tangent there, Shane. <laughs> All good. In Gaelic Games this evening, it's a repeat of last year's decider. Dublin and Goa meeting in Division 1 of the Allianz National Football League. That's at Croke Park this evening. Throw in at 7pm. Uh, in Division 2, Galway, or Donegal, sorry, play Meath. That's in Bally Buffet at the same time. And in Division 1A of the Hurling League, Limerick hosting tip at the Gaelic Grounds from 7pm. Goal at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea against Huddersfield, Andrew Cheel. On Huddersfield, nil. The goal's been coming almost since kickoff. Higuain, the scorer, Gonzalo Higuain. Lovely ball into the box by Kante. Higuain timed his run to absolute perfection, was just onside. Fearsome right footer into the top corner. Chelsea 1, Huddersfield nil. Yeah, Gonzalo Higuain. Not an instant impact, but almost. Uh, Chelsea won Huddersfield nil on his first start at Stamford Bridge. Wolves still 1-0 up against Everton. All the rest of the game still scoreless. Should give you a result from Mallow earlier in the Ladies NFL Football League Division 1. It was uh, Galway, one goal in eight points. Cork, five points in Mallow. So a good win for Galway there in the opening game. Uh, the latest result from the Dublin Racing Festival at Leopardstown was the 3-10 Ladbrokes Dublin, Dublin steeplechase. That was a great one and it has gone to Min, the favourite. Uh, Ruby Walsh on board, the 4-9 favourite with... Uh, Rachel Blackmore on board Ordinary World in second. She was 12 to 1. Uh, so just to run you through the other results from Leopardstown as well, the 12.50, the first race of the morning, the novice hurdle, grade one went to uh, Gordon Elliott's Commander of Fleet with Jack Kennedy on board at odds of 13 to 2. That was ahead of Rhinestone in uh, 10 to 1. The 125 was the BHP Insurance Irish Champion Hurdle Grade 1. That went to Gordon Elliott and Jack Kennedy with Apple's Jade, the 8 to 11 favourite, ahead of Super Sunday in uh, with odds of 4 to 1. The 2 o'clock Labrocks Hurdle was a Grade B race. That went to Off You Go at odds of 8 to 1, ahead of Jeski at 16 to 1. The 235 was the INH Flat Race. That was a Grade 2 race and that went to Envoy Allen, Gordon Elliott's horse, uh, the 4 to 6 on favourite. Uh, and as I said, the three to ten, the latest race went to Wh Min, Willie Mullins, and Ruby Walsh. Four to nine favorite. Ordinary World, Henry Bromhead, and Rachel Blackmore in second. Nathan. Yeah, it's been it, 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 that race has been marred. Unfortunately, Special Tiara uh, broke down badly, and I think has been put down as a former Queen Mother Champion Chase winner right in front of the stands. The uh, you know, there's obviously a fantastic initiative, the Dublin Racing mm. Festival. They've just had one or two issues today. The ground's obviously been quite quick. That's actually two horses. I think the Henry Bromhead, the trainer, has lost on the flat. 
and there's also the low lying sun so they're actually not jumping the last fence and the last hurdle I mean you know I, I love my race and I'm going there tomorrow you know but it's, uh, it's there's been a few a few low lights there today as well unfortunately I mean that's that right in front of the stands a really f- a real old favourite of a horse so I yeah. think that's going to put a real dampener on the day for a lot of people who went a lot of the racing fans who went anyway the people socially will just be in their own zone but uh, a lot of the racing punters certainly uh, that's a that's a massive low light uh, Scotland 17, Italy 3. Scotland have just got their third try. I think it's Stuart Hogg who has just about managed to tap that down in the end zone, does he? They're looking mm. again and again and again. This will be Scotland's third try heading towards a bonus point win at Murrayfield. Of course, Ireland go to Murrayfield next Saturday. And it's a 4.45 start, an hour and 15 minutes to go until Ireland against England. Anything else, Shane? Nope, all good. All right, so Shane will keep us up to date with uh, any of the horse racing as we go on and the rugby as well. But we are talking football. Shane Keegan and Dan McDonnell are in studio. The scores in the Premier League. Chelsea won Huddersfield, Neil Gonzalez, Higuain with the goal there. A penalty from Ruben Neves has given Wolves a 1-0 lead against Everton. Matt Doherty fouled in the area for that. It is Palace nil, Fulham nil. No goals between Burnley and Southampton or in the game between Brighton and Watford. Spurs up to second in the table after a 1-0 win against Newcastle earlier. They're still hanging in there. Spurs, was that Wembley a couple of weeks ago when they were beaten by Manchester United? And the sense was, that's it. It's done, dusted. And then they get all the injuries to Kane, to Ali. Young Min's son goes off to the Asian Cup and you feel it's all going to fall apart. Young Min's son comes back, scores 2-2. Two and two. They're only four points behind Liverpool. Yeah, he's he's been an absolute saviour. I'm a, I'm a lifelong Spurs supporter myself, Nathan. Um... Oh, you definitely. I'll say that here. This is an unbiased footballing <laughs> conversation zone. No you were advocating no Qatar's no triumph in the Asian Cup just <laughs> yeah, to get him yeah. back as soon as possible. <laughs> it, I'll tell you, it was it, without him, I think we do. We it'd certainly all be over. I, I, I can't. Is he see the him. most underestimated player in the Premier League, or has think, he surpassed that now? Yeah, I was just going to say. I think he's kind of gone past that now at this stage. His record over over recent games for Spurs is absolutely ridiculous. So it is. Um, I still can't see Spurs been in the race. Like City, whatever about their slip up again the other night, they they still look like a team who are possibly capable of going on a run where they win every game from now to the end of the season. Um, I can't see Spurs managing to do something like that, particularly with the with the few bodies that they're missing at the moment. Um, City some chance of catching Liverpool Spurs no nah, nah, I can't, I couldn't see it happening myself now to be honest there's been a goal at Selhurst Park Palace against Fulham Mike Lawrence Crystal Palace 1 Fulham 0 Luka Milivojevic from the penalty spot after Cyrus Christie went up for a challenge with Christian Benteke inside the area the ball hit Christie's arm and the referee Michael Oliver pointed to the spot Milivojevic stepped up Rico got a hand to it but it's Crystal Palace 1 Fulham 0 no Wilfried Zaha but no problem for Palace so far so that penalty means they lead Fulham by a goal to nil there's been a goal at Goodison Park a second of the game in this one between Everton and Wolves Paul Anthony it's Everton 1 Wolves 1 and it's that man Gomez who's fired in a blistering shot into the top corner nothing looked on all the defend- Wolves defenders around him he just looked up and hammered it into the top corner to make it one apiece as before that Wolves had an opportunity to take the, a lead a two goal lead when Dendonka one on one with Pickford Pickford making a brilliant save but Everton have fought back and it's Everton 1 Wolves 1 yeah, so and Andre Gomez rocket makes it one all at Goodison Park it was transfer deadline day on Thursday it was a dull enough transfer window in general and a dull enough Thursday not a huge amount happened from an Irish point of view Dan it wasn't James, dull <laughs> well except maybe yeah. from James McCarthy's point of yeah. view he's on the bench again for Everton today still hasn't played a first team game in, in over a year because of injury and he seemed caught in this sort of trap on Thursday night where because it looked as though Idrissa Gay was going to go to Paris Saint-Germain he was going to stay but if Idris Gay stayed that he might get his loan move to Crystal Palace and in the end it seems as though it just all dragged on so late that both of them ended up staying yeah I, I don't even know I mean I think from early in the day on, on Thursday it seemed like McCarthy wasn't going um, whereas on Wednesday there seemed to be confidence that he would be and I think maybe at that point I mean there does seem to be this story going on in the background and I don't know I mean it's the people who are covering the, the Liverpool beat seem to be uh, suggesting that Silva was very unhappy over the possibility of Idris Gay being sold and then you would have thought, okay, if he's going, McCarthy has to stay. But actually, I think from early on Thursday, it seemed like they decided the boat were staying and that was it. And I even think from Thursday afternoon, Everton were sort of adamant that he was going nowhere, McCarthy. So I, I guess maybe you wonder the extent to which the stuff earlier in the week that you might have been hearing was 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 true. Um, I think, you know, Marco Silva is... 
uh, messages about McCarthy have been a bit mixed over the last month. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and I appreciate it's probably tied in with him being under pressure because some weeks he's talking about him wanting to get minutes and he wants him involved as soon as possible. And then they went to Millwall, which, you know, an FA Cup game, which I thought would have been perfect and he wasn't even in the match day squad. Uh, now, he named a strong team for that match probably because he's under pressure and then loses it. Mm. And then you can just imagine everything sort of, mm. you suddenly don't want to be used in a game as a, as a sort of a... To get, he's not in a position to just get him some minutes like as if, as, if, as if he can afford it. Then he's on the bench against Huddersfield. You know, but he, 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 James McCarthy hasn't played you know, since 20th of January last year now. And, and even before that, really since Euro 2016, yeah. has played very little football. Now he's someone who, when he was 16, 17, played a lot of football, even in the Scottish First Division. I mean, James McCarthy's appearance stats, I mean, he's not quite like Darren Gibson. But they're Darren Gibson level of stats in the last maybe three, four seasons. But prior to that... He played a lot of football. Oh, he was one of these guys at 24. Had probably played more first team games than anybody. I remember doing a piece at some stage about like you know top Irish like James McCarthy at 24 played more Premier League games say than like Stephen Reid or someone. You know who? Okay, I know very unlucky with injuries, but had been up there Mm. for a long period of time. So. The slight fear is that it's just wear and tear and, and starting early over the years and he's just in this cycle now where he just he just he just can't get out of it. I mean we we spoke there about Johnny Maguire outside he played last night and fingers crossed it's all good and then you know touch wood he's back, he played ninety, he looked good last night. But there is this fear that once players just get into this, you know, they, they, their body suddenly starts to let and then there's other they're trying to overcompensate and then other things start to happen and you just hope that McCarthy isn't in that because he's still only what 28 yeah you know he should have a lot of time ahead of him it it seems mad now but like realistically if you think back we were talking about James McCarthy in the manner that we're currently talking about Declan Rice Mm. (laughs) really Mm. oh yeah we went through a very similar situation as to who he's going to declare for and at the time Liverpool were supposedly after him everybody was after him and and he was going to be the absolute bedrock of, of things for us for the next decade or so and it's just really really hasn't panned out that way for him you know he's sort of become the forgotten man of Irish football because Declan Rice is the centre of attention like if you had Declan Rice and James McCarthy together in the middle of a midfield like, that, that's assuming he gets uh, back to the player that James, he was the James McCarthy of five years ago yes like that's something you get very excited about but as you say we kind of don't know what sort of player James McCarthy is now we've, yeah. we've seen so little of him like even if he does get a run of games does he, he was never a box-to-box midfielder anyways, but like, how long does it take for your touch to come back? How long does it take for that confidence to run the show in the middle of midfield? Y- you look at that Everton team today, like, uh, uh, I don't know, you might know, Adrissa Gay, is he out today through injury or has he no, thrown I his think ties he's out of prime a little I, bit? Or? I, either he's been... He's unhappy, they were suggesting yeah. during the week. Anyway, uh, yeah. Kevin Caban was on, on on Thursday night and we were talking about, at that stage it looked as though it may still happen, the move to Paris Saint-Germain, and he reckoned that Everton should bite their hand off if they yeah. were getting... 30 million. I was making the point that 30 million in this day and age is absolutely nothing for somebody who generally plays yeah. week in, week out, but he just doesn't see that he's of the calibre necessary. Well, you'd just, you'd just be worried if you're looking and you're going, right, James McCarthy is on the bench there today mm-hmm. and Idrissa Gay is not in the squad. Like, Idrissa Gay, when he's back available, James McCarthy is now probably not even in the squad, never mind in the match yeah. day 11. So the chances of seeing him playing a huge amount of minutes between now and the end of the season are slim to none. You'd have thought so. I mean, Tom Davis is in back in today. Um, and Gomez is obviously playing as well. Yeah, like, see McCarthy, in, I think we went through a, a period with McCarthy where he probably wasn't the player that we hoped that he would become. Like I remember the story about McCarthy when he was 17 at Hamilton going to the training ground for Liverpool when I think when Rafa was in charge and scored a 25-yard goal and they were talking about McCarthy as the next like, mm. Stephen Gerrard type yeah. figure. He scored goals when he was younger like he, at a lower level but he, he, he had that in him. Um, and I don't know, over time, you could argue that he really developed, that he become maybe too safe, you know, and, and he, he became that Joe Allen, more Jordan conservative Henderson, type player. Passes a game. But the one thing you would say is that McCarthy actually played and did, around the, the the better part of the O'Neill era. The, McCarthy was the one constant that started in a lot of the big wins. You know that he started in against Germany at home and the playoff games against Bosnia. And the the big switch during the Euros after two games mm. was actually to take Glenn Whelan out of the side and play McCarthy as like the six. You know, as that defensive yeah. player. And and the McCarthy Brady sort of Hendrick axis. He was actually quite comfortable as the most conservative player in that role. Uh, not flashy, not going to blow you away. I mean, you know, the likes of sort of John Giles and people, I think they wouldn't have loved him because he wouldn't be expressive, but mm. he had a function, he had a role. And I think if Rice goes, I think McCarthy is actually important. If McCarthy and Rice together, 
you actually, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not complaining, it'd be a, still a good option to have, but you'd wonder would Mick want something more dynamic in there if you think McCarthy can cover the ground that he used to, because managers used to think it was actually the amount of space that he would cover rather than what he would do with the right. ball, but we'll, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Scotland have the bonus point. Yeah, 26 through the lead, but uh, just gone over again, and uh, 55 Horn, minutes gone, that's a hat-trick. Hat-trick. Yeah. For, uh, Blair there's a, there's a, a, a group of hardcore East Fife fans sitting in a bar in Bohemians oh. uh, around Daly Mount somewhere at the moment, watch, 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 watching this uh, cheer in Scotland on, at least they have something <laughs> to cheer for. So the Iron Brew Cup is a, uh, I don't know, it's one of these nice kind of competitions whereby teams who maybe don't get to play a lot of games in Europe get to travel a little bit, so Bohemians... Or were one of the who were the other Irish? No, but basically, what's, what the, well, it's the it's the Scottish Challenge Cup is their version of that the lower league trophy, the old Auto Glass Trophy or whatever you want to call it in England, and they decided to extend the invites to clubs from Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. But yeah, you're right; it is like the clubs who who are. But I don't know who competed in from Northern Ireland. Actually, uh, I think TNS went pretty, or who went? One of the Welsh teams went pretty far last year. And was I think, it? Jim? I can't think which one it was, but. Um, Can't believe yeah. you forgot the important results. Yeah, the <laughs> but there's actually, well, actually thing is, bluff that one. Well, there's a few quid in it for the clubs once they get to a particular stage, though. And Bowes have got through a couple of rounds. They beat Sutton United from the English Conference in the previous round. Shane Supple, in his, almost one of his last games, he scored a goal and then saved two penalties in the shootout. But then obviously it's a, it's a, the, the season changed. Like the English, Welsh, Northern Irish seasons have, have kept going, whereas the League of Ireland season has changed. So they have to postpone the Bowes East Fife game for like three months to wait till they go back at the season and now it's been called off so if Bowes had won today their first League of Ireland game would be called off because it would clash with the next round but there, if they, there are like two or three games from Hampden Park which would be like one of the most quirky Irish sports stories <laughs> of all time where Bohemians of Dublin compete in a Scottish Cup final in, a, in Hampden but uh, were there many East Fife supporters over for this? I think they probably would have been so, big time sure but like these are proper like hardcore football fan football trips man. I know like Bowes fans who went to I think Peter Head or whoever they played in the previous round and met a weekend of it took in another game somewhere else so uh, yeah I'm sure there's these five fans over Sutton had a big fan base over because Sutton will never p- travel to play a game out of the country ever you know so for them there's actually a massive novelty it's a, I mean it is peak sort of niche following competition but they're actually people be pretty upset they'll certainly, about this uh, today, you know? they'll certainly stand out amongst the, the Irish and English rugby yeah. fans in Temple Bar <laughs> at 11 o'clock tonight anyway <laughs> yeah. won't they yeah, I'd imagine they will somehow <laughs> so uh, they'll be very happy at least at what's happening on the rugby pitch because Scotland lead Italy 26-3. I'm not sure how much of a crossover there is between East Fife football fans and Scottish I rugby I think so. Fans. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure the Scottish rugby, how mainstream it is in terms of it. I'm actually not sure, to be honest, where what's the relationship between the Scottish public and rugby. Because I mean, Well, if any of them are tuned in somehow, uh, do let us know. 53106 is the text number. So the latest scores in the Premier League, there is around 35 minutes gone in all these games. It's now Everton 1, Wolves 1, Crystal Palace 1-0 up against Fulham, Chelsea leading Huddersfield by a goal to nil. Scoreless between Burnley and Southampton and in the game between Brighton and Watford. In the Championship, Birmingham are 1-0 up at home against uh, Martin O'Neill's Nottingham Forest. It is Brentford 1, Blackburn 2, Middlesbrough 1-0 up away from home against West Brom and Wigan lead Queen's Park Rangers by a goal to nil. All the rest of the games there remain scoreless. Leeds against Norwich is unquestionably the big game in the championship this weekend. That gets underway at half past five. Quick break and then we're going to talk about some of the other transfers involving Irish players over the last week. Football on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. Bobby's Late Breakfast. This Sunday I speak to extreme adventurer Ed Stafford, who was the first person to walk the length of the Amazon and survive. We roll back the years to when the eco-warriors took to the trees and Sting's best solo album is in the cultural toolbox. There'll also be live food and live music. Bobby's Late Breakfast. Join me this Sunday morning from 9 and let me ease you into your Sunday. On News Talk. Now you have three great reasons to switch your family to VHI Healthcare. We're leading the way in family healthcare with our member-only access to VHI Swift Care Clinics, faster access to our VHI Pediatric Clinic, and now you can get 25% off all kids under 18 on all our one plans until February 28th. Switch today. Call 1890-4444 or search VHI One Plans. VHI Healthcare. When you need us, we're there. 
Terms and conditions apply. VHI Healthcare DAC trading as VHI Healthcare is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland and is tied to VHI Insurance DAC for health insurance in Ireland. Nissan's latest innovation is the van that never gets old. Buy any 191 Nissan van and replace it with a new van every three years from just €49 Euro per week ex-fat. Plus, get three years free motor tax and three free services. Visit Nissan.ie. Nissan. Innovation that excites. Finance offers for business users only. Finance is provided by AIB Leasing Limited by way of a leasing agreement. Allied Irish Banks PLC and AIB Leasing Limited, trading as AIB Finance and Leasing, are regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Eligibility, lending criteria, terms and conditions apply. Want to springboard into a computing career? CCT College Dublin is now enrolling for its Level 8 Higher Diploma in Science and Computing, starting in February. This is a part-time course, and because it's a springboard-funded ICT conversion course, it's free or partly funded for eligible participants. Places are limited so apply now through springboardcourses.ie or visit our website cct.ie A business needs to be creative to stay ahead of the game and creative brains need space to think Give them space Think better But let's do it with a little style Castle Knock means business Discover more at castleknockhotel.com Start your story at Woody's. All Dulux 2.5 litre standard interior colours, 2 for €40. Euro. All flat pack furniture and bar stools, half price. And save €60 euro in the Triton T90S or shower, now €229. Euro. Woody's, for all homemakers. T's and C's and exclusion supply. Buying a house shouldn't be all about red tape. It should be about rolling out the red carpet. My Sherry Fits is an online platform that allows you to make offers, see other offers, contact your agent and book viewings. All online, anytime you like. It's an entirely new way to buy a home, built on everything we've always believed in. Find out more at mysherryfits.ie. Sherry Fitzgerald. It's not just about property, it's about people. And they're off with Moore Street Lady leading a live alive O from the flag. Lewis is on the rails with 40 foot jumping ahead of the pack. O'Connell Street is caught in traffic with Zoological Gardens fighting like a tiger. And the Shelburne looking for some room. They're heading to the finish and all in with the chance. Coming through fast and bleed rapid. But GPO steps with authority at the post. Dublin Racing Festival. A celebration of the best music, culture and racing in Dublin. February 2nd and 3rd. Book now at leopardstown.com. Dublin Racing Festival. More than racing, more than a festival. With Virgin Media, you can build up the entertainment and tear down the price. Switch to Virgin Media today and get superfast broadband and TV for just €49 Euro a month for an awesome 12 months. The sale that stacks up. Now on. See virginmedia.ie. T's and C's apply. See virginmedia.ie. 12-month contract. Offer ends 27th of February 2019. Help keep the winter out and the warmth in with Dimplex and Morphe Richards. View the range of portable heaters, electric blankets, slow cookers and soup makers online at paracity.ie or call in store today. This 200-page report for your board meeting was printed using a branded ink cartridge. And this 200-page report was printed using a high-grade ink cartridge from inkjet.ie. What's the difference? Oh, about €15. Euro. Get quality ink cartridges from just two euro and fast delivery at inkjet.ie. <coughs> okay, guys, welcome to our Q1 AGM planning quarterly review central meeting. This year, we're really going to be getting our ducks in a row, picking that low hanging fruit, and running our best people up the flagpole. Right, now let's square that circle, put the record on, and see who dances. Any questions? Business can be complicated, but travel doesn't have to be. With My Taxi Business, you can download receipts and manage multiple bookings online. Make the smarter choice at MyTaxi.com. Football on Off the Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. Welcome back. It's Nathan, Dan, and Shane Keegan in studio with you this afternoon. Uh, no goal since we left you in the Premier League. Still Chelsea 1 0 up against Huddersfield. Palace 1 0 up against Fulham. And it's Everton 1. Wolves 1. Scoreless between Burnley and Southampton and between Brighton and Watford. At half time in the Allianz Football League at Crow Park, this game is. It's Leash 1 6, Louth 3 4. 
while it is Westmead 1-4, Carlo 1-6. Um, so we're talking about uh, some of the Irish players transfer-wise, but you touched on James Collins, who is a striker with Luton in League One, and Luton are uh, flying. He scored again. Yeah, he's absolutely flying. He's having a fantastic season. Um, I think he was, was he joint top goal scorer in the division heading into today? Yeah, so I, I think, think he, he went that, top That, that possibly yeah. takes him out on his own. Um, look, he's... he's Got a bit of a colourful past. Um, he's been involved in in a couple of hairy enough instances, I suppose, here and there. Um, so he has. But I mean, if you're talking about Will Keane, um, yeah, yeah, you know, and all the talk of, of of trying to tempt him, surely um, you would imagine on paper James Collins looks a, a better prospect. He was he was at Villa as a young fella. Mm, yeah, I was saying to you before that he doesn't I, need to be tempted though because he played for Ireland. Yeah, yeah, oh, uh, no, ab ab no. absolutely. He um yeah he would have been at Villa at the same time as as Mikey Drennan, Graham Burke, um, Jack Grealish. There was a whole pile that were either Sammy Irish or qualified. Well, Sammy yeah. Carruthers exactly. Um, and he was you know he was well talked about at the time and then kind of disappeared but he's, he's very very much back on the scene for a play at home he was uh, alongside Samir Carruthers as well uh, Eggs. that day they've Shelton, gone racing correct? they've that gone race. racing yes. Yes. They, they've gone racing and had uh, had a very nice time and you've probably seen the uh, yeah indeed. I think Pat, did Pat Fenlon take him to Hibs at one point as well Collins I, I think he might have yeah, he spent a season at Hibs I think like did that people at various stages of yeah I actually see um, he, he was in one of the papers during the week talking about how he has now grown up and matured and yeah. all of that kind of right. crap taking him a while I've seen, he was like, talking about that six years ago I see here <laughs> so, but, but like he's starting he, to fly you know. but, yeah. but Luton, are, Luton are an interesting story now because there's actually a real Irish legion there now because Alan McCormick is there um, and there's a Alan Sheehan is there as well, and there's a, Aaron Connolly has joined them on loan mm, for the rest yeah. of the season. A Galwegian at Brighton who has an injury to shake off, but you know scored a lot of goals at Premier League two level this year. So, um, well, how highly do you rate Aaron Connolly? Because people are talking about young Irish strikers, and it's all about Troy Parrott right now. Whereas an awful lot of people feel that actually maybe Aaron Connolly is maybe even on a similar level to Troy Parrott. Yeah, I saw him play up in Eamon DC Park actually um, towards the tail end of last year in an international game. Um, now, the problem they have, well, it's, it's a fantastic problem, but the problem we have at that moment is we, we actually have an awful lot of number nines, an awful, awful lot of number nines. And he was playing, in fact, he was playing a very similar position to Sean Maguire last night, this wide. technically wide but tucked in wide position where somebody shuttles across and covers for him so that he can stay a little bit higher up a la Ronaldo, I suppose, when he was still being used in that position. But he, like, he looks a serious player, that's for sure. And I mean, the goals speak for themselves. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do at... Um, at adult level, look, again, he's a fella who, when I was at Galway, um, you know, you, you make phone calls to, to, to some of these clubs about some of the players that they've got in at under-23 level, and I'd kind of always try and make an argument that, you know, certainly, right, he's got a good move now, he's going to be tested at Luton, but in comparison, under-23 Premier League, as opposed to a fella maybe coming over back home here for, for six months and, and playing adult football. Um. Well, I was I, funny, I, I was asking Stephen Kenny that at the press conference last week about okay. the under-21s, yeah. uh, about how does he judge players who are playing at under-23 level in England, because he made the point that there's pretty much no under Irish under-21s playing first-team football in England mm. at any level. And... There's several players of this first of this homegrown squad that are getting together. Is it this weekend? Next few days? That next next week together? to play next, next Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. That they're getting together that are uh, playing in, in the League of Ireland. So how do you balance out guys who are at the lower leagues in the England, not really getting football, guys who are playing under 23 level at Liverpool, at Spurs, at clubs like that, and players who are playing first team proper men's football yeah. in the League of Ireland. He, well, he said, look, that's the art of it. That's, that's my job is to, figure, is to figure that out. Like, Where do you stand on that? Yeah, I, I certainly think it, it's got to be more beneficial for, for, the, for the players' development to be playing adult football than it has to be to play, playing 23s. I mean, you talk to anybody who regularly watches 23s football, you talk to people involved in it. Mm. Um, again, you know, from my own personal experience, say we, had, we brought in Rory Hale halfway through my first year at Galway. And I mean, it's amazing how quickly these fellas can can fall off uh, fall off the radar, or not off the radar, but I mean, when we brought Rory in, we brought Rory in in July. Rory had been one of the four nominations for under-23 player of the month in Premier League 2 in April, and yet he was released and, you know, gone by the wayside and trialling with conference sides within the space of, of a couple of months. Um, 
he came in and he was a revelation for us and then had a great season with Derry as well. I think, you know, I, I think there is a little bit of a thing with some of the English clubs, particularly when it comes to the Irish players, that they're a bit iffy about letting them back to Ireland and back to home and oh you know will it make them even more homesick then when we try and get them back yeah. over and that kind of thing I think that maybe plays into it a little bit but you know if, if you had the likes of a, of a, an Aaron Connolly going in at like Shamrock Rovers at the moment appear to have everything bar maybe an out and out number 9 who can score 20 plus goals imagine if they had been able to persuade Aaron Connolly to go there rather than go to Luton you know something like that yeah I guess the, I mean, it, is the crossover seasons a slight complication at times I mean that if, if, if you if you rate Aaron Connolly do you let him go till June you know if, yeah. you, if you want him back in pre-season I can see there's maybe slight issues or, or sometimes in that July window where you want someone do you want to send him somewhere for 6 months or send him somewhere for 3 months and that's one of the slight issues about our season and he's like, just turned 19. Yeah, the thing about Connolly, I, I, I don't know the lad, so I, I'm not going to sort of, I'm just going on speaking to people. I, I get the impression he's a talented player, but he might benefit from like going to a, a sort of a man's dressing room and it might sort of bring him along a bit. I think you might have, a, like most 19 year olds might have a small bit of growing up to do, you know, and it might be a really good environment to go to League One with some senior pros because it, as you say, like, you know, Premier League Two or under 23 league form, as such, I mean, how much does it count for? It can get players into a false sense oh, of security to some degree as massively. well. Massively. You know, and they, they, it's great. They have the shirt and they have the crest and they play for this club. But really, their experience and their value is really the same as the bloke at Rochdale who's played, you know, 30 games, you know, for, for Rochdale. So, and, and even at the very top level, you watch, say, Chelsea and Manchester City, who are the two best academies yeah. there are and the two best under 23 teams even with a lot of players got out on loan like the talent level in those under 23 games is off the scale yeah. like it's brilliant football to watch but nobody ever tackles you what, what's the title they have in this tournament where the 23s play against the lower league senior teams oh the check a trade the check, check, a, the trade, check a trade like none of the 23 teams have managed to make any sort of mark on that you know so that kind of tells its own story you know ball, yeah yeah I mean, the different different strokes for different folks to a degree. There might be some technical players. You don't you don't maybe want to sour them early in some mm. ways. I can, and I, I assume every player is different in terms of that. But yeah, I think the I think maybe the thing about coming home to Ireland. That's a very valid point about not wanting them to get into the into the zone. And I guess part of it is they need to have. You need to have a degree of respect for the setup that they're coming into here and, and hoping that they're going to get their excellent level of training and coaching. And I think that's a blind spot and a perception that might exist towards here that needs to be addressed. I mean, I suppose Ryan Delaney used that as a... Ryan Delaney came to Cork and had a very good loan spell, but from what I can gather, Burton Albion, but next to no interest in what he was doing here. And he ended up he ended up getting to move to Rochdale off the back of it. But, you know... D- d- out so, of sight, out of mind. Yeah, it's sort of a bit of that, yeah, yeah. All right, half time is going in the Premier League. Let's go to Selhurst Park first. Crystal Palace against a struggling Fulham side. Mike Lawrence. Crystal Palace 1, Fulham 0. The home side started the brighter, but it was a handball from Fulham defender Cyrus Christie which allowed them to break the deadlock on 24 minutes. The ball hit Christie's arm. Luka Milivojevic dispatched the penalty for his seventh of the season. Alexander Mitrovic could have put Fulham ahead early on, heading Brian's cross wide. Christian Benteke making his first start since September for, for, for Palace. He's in for the band Zaha. He hit the woodwork with a dramatic overhead kick. It's Crystal Palace 1, Fulham 0. Cyrus Christie's going to start right back for Ireland, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Cyrus or centre midfield. Centre midfield, centre midfield, centre midfield, midfield he's yeah. going to start. Cyrus, like Cyrus, uh, this is his first season in the Premier League. And I think, you know, he had a few bad experiences earlier on. And I'm not going to be a massive fan of Cyrus as a player. But, uh, you know, I think where is he up to now, appearances wise? He's sort of up well out, like I think 27, 23 appearances or so. Sort of, so he's actually. You know, we'd be happy if we had a striker making that many appearances, yeah, or a true. left back, or a you know, in, in pretty much most positions in the pitch. It just so happens we've got three right backs playing regularly in the Premier League. It's just sort of a typical look. Uh, let's go to the Amex Brighton against Watford. Alan Lewis. Brighton nil, Watford nil, and like the 30,000 people inside the stadium, this goal, this game could really do with the goal to warm things up a little bit. We've come close. Troy Deeney's header was close for Watford. Basuma Grosh and Dunk all had half chances for the home side. Davy Proper should have put Brighton ahead through volleying over at the far post. It was a difficult chance, but he should have hit the target at least. The best chance of the game, though, a Pascal Grosh cross from the right-hand side for Brighton. Jurgen Lacardia's header, brilliant 
brilliantly turned around the post by Ben Foster. Half time, Brighton nil, Watford nil. Every time Chelsea sees it looks like it's about to fall apart, they just seem to find a result from somewhere. It looks like it's going to be the case again today. They're at home against Huddersfield. Andrew Cheel. Chelsea 2, Huddersfield 0. Chelsea almost totally dominating. A hat full of chances. Higuain's goal put them one up. Azpilicueta's shot was well saved. Barkley just wide. Those are just two of the several chances. Couple for Huddersfield. Moyes header just over. Billing shot blocked by defender. And right on half time, Azpilicueta fouled by Kachunga. A lightweight foul, but Hazard's penalty was perfect and decisive. Bottom corner. Chelsea 2, Huddersfield 0. Yeah, Huddersfield look absolutely doomed despite the change in manager. They are 13 points from safety as it's stands in the Premier League. Next up to Turf Moor, two sides have started the day right outside the relegation zone. It's Burnley against Southampton, Adam Drury. A goalless first half at Turf Moor, but not one without drama. Sean Dyche has long felt his Burnley side don't get penalties, but when Barnes was brought down in the box by McCarthy, that looked to have changed. But instead of getting a spot kick, the Clarets forward was booked for diving. The Saints have had a few chances on goal, but were dealt a big blow when the lively Ings had to be subbed off early after picking up a knock. There's a slight air of tension about this game. Half-time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Southampton nil. Yeah, that might well be good news for Shane Long. Not that we wish injury upon anybody, but uh, Danny Ings going off there in that game for Southampton, and he was replaced by Shane Long on 27 minutes. Not so bad, yeah. Look, uh, again, you look at that Irish team coming back to, to, to you know, mix, how is Mick's first team going to look? And We managed to drag an awful lot of conversation out of this Irish team, don't we? We do. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> Every single week, I think, we're not going to talk about Ireland, and half the show is talking about it's, Ireland. It's to do with the profile of your guests sometimes, I think, <laughs> yeah. to be fair. I mean, like, if you've got Johnny here, you can have a, we'd have a League of Ireland tangent. <laughs> yeah. you know, we could be talking through the pre-season games that today. Is, well, that is we true. Actually, we're talking just there off ads about the... Uh, there is a lot of pre-season games going on at the moment and it's absolutely wrecking my head reading the updates of Troilus C has just this this guy these players Troilus Day Troilus, Troilus C, C is having an absolutely yeah. cracking pre-season Tr- Troilus Day hasn't had such a good pre-season <laughs> everywhere Troilus D, C pops up Troilus D is generally coming off the bench late you know Troilus D hasn't had a great time of it but there's all these why sort of can you not name the players that are on trial because you're trying to not alert other clubs to his presence, basically. Um, we would have had a prime example of it. We would have had um, young Kenny McAvoy in on trial. Um, Kenny had, again, he's another one of these fellas who was... Garrett Bale look-alike. Yeah, Bale. 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 Like, that's him. That's that's him. And that. Garrett Bale play-alike in terms of his style of play, too, in fairness. But we had basically... I, I mean, we had tried to make arrangements to get Kenny into the country and get him to play a game without Watford ever hearing because we knew they'd, they'd make a strong move for him. So, obviously, that's that's an example where we would have had him down the street. Did, word, but, did um, word get out? Oh, of course it did, yeah. It's so always it's it's lads, a waste of a time. A lot of lads said they saw Gareth Bale playing for <laughs> yeah, Galway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, it, 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 whatever hope you have of covering it up, um, Shamrock Rovers certainly weren't going to have any luck covering up theirs today. They named their team today with a try list in goal and a try list at centre forward. But uh, the try list at centre forward soon found himself on the score sheet. But their opposition, Cabin Teeley, just tweeted his name as the goal scorer. <laughs> so that's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, know, brilliant. This hard to really hide it at all. Yeah. What are we, two weeks away from the start of the League of Ireland yeah, season? Yeah, Friday the 14th, yeah. 15th. 15th. Oh, 14th. No, no. 15th. 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 Yeah. 15th. It's alright. You, you can have Valentine's night at home, Dan, and then yeah. get I'll into the good here, stuff actually, straight but, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a couple of weeks away. But there was, I mean, a lot of moves on Thursday. You said it was a quiet, and it was at a Premier League, a sort of higher level it was, but mm. at a lower level Irish, it was actually one of the busiest transfer days I can remember. What stood out? Well, Graham Burke, who's gone from Preston to Gillingham, who was, you know, a year ago, was in our radars in a, at a high level. Yeah. Hasn't really worked out. He's gone to Gillingham. I see he's playing number 10 today. Uh, Dave McMillan has gone from St. Johnston to Hamilton in Scotland. Um, there was a couple of, there was actually multiple, Scott Hogan, Aston Villa to Sheffield United was another one. Dave at Myler had gone to Coventry mm. from Reading. He's playing against Graham Burke today down in League One. Um, Andy Boyle. Andy Boyle went to Ross County earlier in the week. Like in many cases, the Aaron Connolly one that we referenced, and there was a couple. I think there was a. I think I think Stephen Hunter was involved in moving a guy from Ipswich Shane to McLaughlin. Shane McLaughlin to AFC Wimbledon, and a couple more. Now, unfortunately, in many cases, they're just sliding down the ladder mm. ever so slowly. You know, in a lot of those cases, would it have been disappointment among League of Ireland clubs that they couldn't bring them back home. Well, I think in the case of, I mean, every club in the League of Ireland, maybe apart from the Dock, is looking for a striker at the moment. I mean, that's why they're, they're yeah. playing all the trialist A, B, and C games because if they find someone, I see Sligo have signed a guy there. Sligo Rover signed someone yesterday, um, a Nigerian, Nigerian striker. So there, people are really taking a punt, and I think there is a, an argument for taking a punt. I mean, you've been involved in this because you're hoping you can find something better than, than what's there because unfortunately at the moment 
there probably isn't a, a, a lot of sort of maybe top level attackers here at the moment and mm. I mean Courtney Dufus was another one who was around last year he's ended up moving to Yeovil instead McMillan decided to stick it out in Scotland I think Dundalk would have come for him if he decided to come home but I think Shamrock Rovers really would have liked mm. to, to get him in and, and they are the ones who are so Graham Burke, I think realistically, Graham Burke has signed, I think, a three-year deal at Preston and he's got two and a half years left. I mean, simple simple economics dictates here. You know, they're probably on a good contract there. Andy Boyles in the last six months have a really good contract at Preston. You mightn't get that at your next club, so unless the club are willing to pay you up, just, I think you set out and take that contract. Just you know? look, just looking at it there, just looking at Gillingham's twi- Twitter feed, they just tweeted at halftime, a great debut so far from Graham Burke. So, I mean, he's obviously making an instant impact and he needs game time straight away again. And maybe that's his level. Well, it's possible. I, I have had this debate that lads going straight from here to the championship, it's a real big jump. It is a jump. We'd like to think maybe it isn't, but it is a big jump. And someone like Sean Maguire has done exceptionally well to manage that. Actually, I think League One is a good pitch. I think it's not a bad... Like, you see what Ronan Curtis has done at Portsmouth this year. Um, but at the same time, players here might not necessarily receive like a, a life-changing offer from a League One club. Yeah. So uh, all of a sudden, the gamble for uprooting, I think it depends on your age and other factors to go into it. So it, it, it's a tough balancing act. We see Jimmy Curhan joining Rochdale the other day. We have a load of lads uh, actually sprinkled around League One who started a championship and maybe just over time... You, you, you might find your level eventually, and that's, that's it. Was that's always going to be tough for Graham Burke. Like I haven't seen quite a bit of him at the start of last season at Rovers. He was good, but he never looked as though he was on, say, the level Richie Towle was at when Richie Towle went over. And also, you're you're at a team in Shamrock Rovers, or one of the better teams in the League of Ireland, where they can afford a little bit of luxury. Are Preston ever going to be able to afford a little bit of luxury? And I think a huge problem, a huge problem that an awful lot of of, of our lads that are having are having when they're going over there is. They've been brought across, they're, they're coming in a little bit lower down the pecking order and it's kind of like they're a cheap gamble to a certain extent mm. and the killing thing for them, and you see it time and time again, you see it in Graham Burke's case and even to a lesser extent with Sean Maguire last night and that they very, very often get found, get found end up playing in a secondary position. Mm. Like if Graham Burke is going to make it at an English club, he's going to have to play in the ten. It's simple as that because he's he's he has he's a really 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 good ten. I can see how he would struggle uh, either Preston. side at seven or eleven at, in a championship level. Yeah, and level. Preston, his rival at Preston is Alan Brown actually, mm. and, and that says something about the way Preston play. That they like to play. I've seen a lot of Preston. They like to play. Uh, with the sort of the wingers really they need a certain amount of energy that's why Daryl Horgan almost struggled as well there too he wasn't the type of winger that they wanted sometimes it's they actually have a few different players playing the guy Barcuse and they come on last night is a big big fella and then Shawnee gives them a lot of energy yeah you need to go to the right club but at the same time that's easy to say I can imagine from Graham Burke whatever options he had Preston is a good Irish contingent Absolutely. you know yeah. I can see yeah. why Very you know it, it's hugely tempting um, but he is a number 10 and I agree like it's easy to say it now but there's some clubs that don't look a good fit for certain players at certain times and a lot of it is I think as well for people to say well look at all the players go to Preston it hasn't worked but for Preston this is a cheap punt for them yeah. if they went down to try and sign a player from League 1 or League 2 they'd have to pay and they actually have they signed your man Jaden Stockley mm. who played up front last, last night. night is he a better player than Shawnee I, I wonder over time will he prove him to be but they paid way more for him than they did for Shawnee Maguire well, looking, yeah, at, looking, so. at, looking at the game last night you would so, so Sean started on the left in this kind of 4-2-3-1 last night as I say a little bit tucked in alright but they did eventually take Stockley out and, and Sean went to, uh, to the out and out number nine position and again if Sean is going to rediscover the form that he showed before, prior to the injury he needs to get back in that nine position as quickly as possible if we're, if we're going to see the most of him um, both in terms of Preston and getting him back to his best for, for when the international side are going to need him again. If you have any thoughts on what we've been talking about 53106 is the text number leave a comment on our social channels. Let's go quickly to Goodison Park before the second half starts let's get the latest between Everton and Wolves from Paul Anthony. Live the game here at Goodison Park that saw the visitors take the lead through Ruben Neves who converted from the spot seven minutes into the game after Leighton Baines had brought down Matt Dodge in the area. The visitors then had an opportunity to extend that lead then Donker found himself one-on-one with Pickford, the England keeper making an excellent save and two minutes later all square Gomez picking up the ball 25 yards out and firing into the top corner and then on the stroke of half-time Jimenez heading home a Matino free kick to make the half-time score Everton 1, Wolves 2. 
So Scotland will head into next week's game against Arnold on the back of a bonus point 33-20 victory over Italy at Murrayfield. We are 40 minutes away from kickoff at the Aviva Stadium. Ireland against England. Johnny Murphy is there for us. We'll check in with him next. Football on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. Join that conversation. Text us on 53106. Texts cost 30 cent. Winning the Six Nations requires more than strength and skill. It demands insight and expertise, exactly what you'll find in the Sunday Times. With Ireland taking on England in the Aviva this weekend, make sure you read Peter O'Reilly, Stephen Jones and David Walsh's comprehensive coverage of the crucial clash. Pick up your copy of the Sunday Times. Start your story at Woody's. All Dulux 2.5 litre standard interior colours, 2 for 40 euro. All laminate flooring, 3 for 2. Plus, get 100 euro off the DeWalt 18 volt brushless combi kit. Now 149 euro. Woody's. We're all homemakers. T's and C's and exclusion supply. Football Index is reinventing football betting. You can buy and sell the world's top players. Their value may go up and down. But it's not over with the final whistle like a regular bet. Football Index, reinventing football betting. Start building your portfolio today at footballindex.co.uk or download the app now. New customers only, minimum deposit and conditions apply. Gamble responsibly. Epic savings await. Like our half-price SIM-only sale. For just $14.99 a month, get 25 gigs of data, free air sport pack, unlimited calls and texts, all on a 30-day contract. For more, call 1-800-500-300, go in-store, or visit air.ie. Air. Let's make possible. Offer available until 28th of Feb 2019. $14.99 per month for six months, $29.99 per month thereafter. Air Sport Just Mobile app is available on selected mobile plans until 31st of March 2019. Unlimited allowances subject to fair use. For full details, terms, and fair usage, see air.ie. Every brand has a story. Some are built over decades, others over centuries. Discover the German car brand, meticulously engineered over 120 years to bring you our cleanest, most efficient engines yet. Discover Opel. Come and celebrate Opel's 120-year anniversary event at your local Opel dealership. Choose your perfect 191 Opel, then choose your preferred offer, like 0% PCP or HP Finance, a guaranteed minimum of €3,000 scrappage, or three years free servicing. Opel's 120-year anniversary event. From now until February 20. Visit your Opal dealership for more. Opal, the future is everyone's. Lending criteria, terms and conditions apply. Higher purchase agreement provided by Bank of Ireland Trading as Bank of Ireland Finance. Mattresses Delivered.ie. Nationwide delivery within 48 hours for free. That's Mattresses Delivered.ie. Lowest prices guaranteed. Don't forget the hyphen. T's and C's apply. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, Daddy, get, get, up, get up, get up. We're going to the park, remember? <laughs> Daddy isn't feeling very well. Mammy isn't either. Not again. Why don't you go watch some cartoons? We'll be down in a minute. Okay. God, it was great crack, but it's so not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely drinking less next time. Alcohol can affect your mood and your energy levels. Drink less and you'll have more time to spend with those you love. Find out more at askaboutalcohol.ie from the HSE. Funny how small things matter most. Imagine if all 10 million cups of tea we drink in Ireland every day were powered by 100% green energy and not by burning fossil fuels. And imagine if all our dishwashers, hair dryers and TVs were powered by green energy too. Isn't that a future worth acting on? Go to sseertristy.com now to view our range of switching offers and join us in changing the world, one cup of tea at a time. SSE Air Tristy. This is Generation Green. Terms and conditions apply. A train approaches the platform. For some, it's just the 6.45 to Houston. But for you, it's an office on wheels. Here, the canteen comes to you. The person sitting opposite you isn't just a passenger, they're a colleague. And regardless of what your business card says, from the moment you step on board, you're the boss. Rediscover the joy of the train. Great fares for business customers at irishrail.ie. Having a flutter? Top tip, quinbet.com. Ireland's newest online sportsbook and casino. For all your horse racing, football, casino and more, Quinbet has you covered. With live in-play markets on mobile, PC and app. Quinbet.com. Terms and conditions apply. Gamble responsibly. Visit gambleaware.ie.
The Sub-Zero sale is now on at Pamela Scott with up to 70% off winter coats, jackets, knitwear, hats and scarves. The freezing cold weather is on the way, so wrap up warm at the Pamela Scott Sub-Zero sale in-store and online at PamelaScott.com. The Sub-Zero sale now on at Pamela Scott. Across Ireland on 106 to 108 FM and at Newstalk.com This is News Talk. Good afternoon, I'm Adrienne Harmon. The chairman of the board overseeing the development of the National Children's Hospitals resigned. It follows controversy over the spiralling cost of the new facility, which could exceed €2 billion. Euro. In a statement, Tom Costello says he's concerned over the reputational damage that the issue's having on the project. Sinn Féin Health spokesperson Louise O'Reilly insists accountability is needed. We need to know how this happened, we need to know who was asleep at the wheel and we need to know what the hell the Minister for Health was doing while the costs were escalating out of control. A meeting of the INMO Executive Council is underway this afternoon to discuss the possibility of escalating the nurses' dispute. The first of six strike dates took place on Wednesday with further dates planned over the next two weeks. Sinn Féin President Mary Lou MacDonald says the government have failed to engage with the nurses. They now fail in allowing this crisis to escalate and rather than engaging respectfully with nurses and with their unions uh, by making suggestions that they might cut their their pension entitlements or, or their pay. The US decision to withdraw from a nuclear weapons treaty with Russia raises the prospect of nuclear destruction in Europe. That's the message from the Irish Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. Their chairperson, Dr David Hutchinson Edgar, says the INF treaty was key to ending the Cold War. For one side to withdraw from that treaty uh, opens up a huge dangerous vista of renewing the situation where the continent of Europe is put under threat of nuclear destruction. A guarded search operation targeting dissident Republican groups in County Louth has come to an end. It began yesterday morning on land near Omeath and resulted in the discovery of a significant amount of ammunition along with a mortar tube. That's it for now. More in an hour. News Talk Weather. Thanks to Des Kelly Interiors. New store now open in Tallow Retail Centre on the Belgard Road. DesKelly.ie Staying cold and dry, but there will be some scattered hail or snow showers in western counties. Continuing dry then tonight with severe frost in places, lows of between 0 and minus 3 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Football on Off the Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. Oh, oh, our boy, our boy Nathan Redmond. Cracker to give Southampton the lead away against Burnley. Is he supporting to save the night if he's watching? Oh, the that's the big question. He's probably not watching it, to be fair. That's what we need to get our reporter to ask after the game. Who are you cheering for tonight, Nathan? <laughs> yeah, if, listen, he might know what's going on, in which case, you know, it's a brilliant goal. Well, his automatic answer should be Ireland and everything they do. But he hasn't even committed yet, though. That's my point. He hasn't met. Well, I mean, that's some, it mightn't be his answer yet. He hasn't met Mick McCarthy yet, as far as I know. It was only the agents that he was speaking with. And I think, I think Martin O'Neill was making progress a while back, but mm. Redmond, I believe, as well. Goals uh, like that, though. He's in a good run of form. Goals like that will get him back in the England squad, where he really wants to be. Uh, just on this, so James Collins is playing League One for Luton. Um, Will Keane has never done very much. David Goldrick has just scoring. scored for Sheffield United, actually. There's someone who's having a good season. Is Mick McCarthy just sounding all these people out? Or like is are guarantees been given to Will Keane that if he declares he'll be in the squad, is he good enough to be in the squad? I don't think you can give Will Keane a guarantee. That's what I mean. I, no, I think he's sending him out. I mean, Will Keane is, what, 26, you know? I mean, he's, he's never going to play for England. I don't think he's good enough or in a position to be looking for demands. It's not like... I mean, once we were losing our minds over Scott Hogan around 18 months ago or so. You know, and we, certainly Hogan's people were angling towards being the next Vardy. And I know, I know that from people who sort of... Who actually got the impression the player himself actually was quite up for the whole Irish thing the whole time, but it was people around them more so driving that one. Um, I don't think McCarthy's in a position to give any guarantees. I mean, McCarthy effectively has six months, you know, to, to qualify for a tournament and then maybe a playoff next March. So um, there's only so many games. I mean, someone could get a bad injury and miss half of his campaign, you know, yeah. and it might not even be that, that bad an injury. So uh, Nathan, I, Nathan Redmond would be in a very different bracket, though. Nate, like, Nathan yeah, Redmond is. isn't, you know... Yeah, isn't if he was who, to declare, he could, be, he could be starting. I think he'd need uh, to be told. That, I think Redmond probably would need... 
unfortunately, whether you agree with it or not, I, I can't imagine McCarthy will say just declare for us and see how it goes. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, you'll be in my thoughts. Touch. I think with him it would be more. Here's where I see you playing. Whereas I think with Will Keane it would be definitely more of a in my thoughts uh, type discussion. You know. Let's go to the Aviva Stadium because we're only half an hour away from kickoff now. Ireland against England in the Six Nations. Johnny Murphy is on the line. Afternoon, Johnny. Afternoon, Nathan. How are you? How is all at the Aviva? Yeah, all looks good. Uh, just settling into their warm ups here. Uh, Ireland started maybe about two or three minutes earlier than. Uh then, then England did. England went straight into a split and uh, Ireland were together, so they're both just split now, running through things. What are you noticing from the warm-up? Anything at all that's standing out? Uh, not really. Putting some uh, high balls in and John, on Robbie Henshaw? <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're just kind of... Uh, England are kind of concentrating on close close quarter stuff, a bit of rook and pads for the forwards, and then the backs doing kind of back stuff and passing and 3v2s and stuff like that. So, um, interesting enough, the backs are currently with... Um, Andy Farrell, they're doing a bit of defensive shape uh, first, and uh, Joe's actually attacking on the left wing here for the for, for the non-players <laughs> against the starters. Right, I, I've with all the different pundits we spoke to this week ahead of the game, I've yet to hear one of them predict that England are going to win this game. Yeah. Can you make any sort of a case for England? Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, definitely. You know, you look at their side. Um, now, I think he's kind of stumbled upon it, upon it by accident in terms of uh, Eddie Jones' selection, but I do think it's probably the strongest side he can pick. You look at the balance of kind of power, ball playing ability throughout the whole squad between the back row, uh, the centres, the back three. You know, I, I, I do think it's, and you look at actually the, the crossover between the teams. You know, you've got, you know, Keith Harris against Johnny May, you know, two speed merchants, you know, you Jacob Stockdale against Jack Knoll, who are both bigger and, and more physical, you know. So these guys, your matchups across the park, you know, are very, very similar. And mm. um, it's, you know, for me, I, I think, you know, nine points, nine points spread, I think, or eight points, whatever, I think it's too much. You know, I, I think it's going to be very, very close here. Um, and I think England probably have a bit of a point to prove after what happened last year. Uh, I think they were lucky during the uh, autumn series in terms of a couple of decisions went their way, but they still had a very good one and they were down a lot of players. So, you know, I, I think this is going to be quite close given what, uh, um, given the teams that have been picked. Have you any concerns about Henshaw at fullback? No, I don't think so. Um, you know, I, I, I think... Possibly, you know, you look at it, there might be a surprise selection in Elliot Daly at 15, but it doesn't change any of the back cover, the backfield cover stuff they would have done last week because they probably would have been expecting Mike Brown, who has a left foot as well. So, you know, that dynamic of right and left footers doesn't make any difference to the backfield cover that he would have been practicing all last week. You know, people forget that, you know, a few years ago when he first came on the scene, people were talking about him being the, the long term replacement for Rob Kearney. Mm. Um, you know, and uh, the fact that he's, he's kind of slotted in. In to that 12 spot you know you don't actually see his footballing ability in terms of his how good his kick game is that that often because he's used in a different way at 12 you, you uh, wouldn't be worried he's lost any of that ability by playing uh, no, by playing center no no that, that's natural that's natural ability you don't lose that um, you know and I think someone of Robbie's quality is always going to be making sure that his his kicking game is up to scratch purely based on you know the run kick options that he would have to offer at 12 so no I, I wouldn't have any worry at all um, and you know this isn't a you know, a, a selection that Joe has just has just made this Tuesday. You find that Robbie was there last week, and you know, in in Portugal, and they were probably running this through. So it's a selection that was probably tagged him when he came into camp nearly two weeks ago now, and he's had two weeks to to make sure he understands everything from his defensive position in closing the gate at last man to his backfield cover between you know a left-footed 15 when they play alongside a, a right-footed. So you know, I'd say all those are all those boxes are well and truly ticked by now. Manu Tuilagi, his return is obviously a huge boost for Eddie Jones and for England. Hasn't played in the Six Nations since back in 2013. You played with him at Leicester? Yeah, I did. Yeah, well, he just started. Um, uh, he made his debut when we played South Africa. Oh, we beat yeah. South Africa on a, a, a Tuesday night in November. Uh, he knocked out a couple of. Uh, he knocked out a couple of spring boxes as a 17 year old kid then so I think his power has just has just gone up not down since then yeah uh, again because it's such a long period of time since he's played 
at this level. Like, you sort of forget just how brilliant he was back then and how excited everybody was about him. Is, is he a different player now to 2013? Uh, yeah, I think he's he, he's improved. Uh, I think his fitness will will have improved. That was something that Manu probably always kind of struggled with with, with slightly. Um, and you know he hasn't been able to get a, a really good long long stint of games to make sure that he has that kind of ultra fitness that that is needed. Um, he has that now. He's back playing very well. Well, in a in a Leicester shirt, um, they're using him slightly different in Leicester in terms of he's playing 13 with Matamu at 12. Um, so that changed, but people kind of because of Manu's size and his sheer power, people actually don't give him credit for his actual ball playing ability and the skills that he has. He's got a very good offload game. He, he's got good footwork when he when he needs to use it. He gets his hands free, and he's got a very good sleight of hand in terms of his offload game. But his passing ability it is very good and people don't give him credit for that and wouldn't be surprised if you know that can be used today or 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 or, or going forward you'll find that it's a really good balance i think that that 12 13 between himself and uh, and henry slade is as good as england can be in that area um it's a fantastic balance you know henry slade is a is a fantastic player really really good and himself and ring rose are going to have a ding dong battle there at 13 today what about scrum line out line out is do you expect any side to have superiority in that or is it very much 50 50 no, i think it's i i i think it's it's 50 50 i think at line out ireland probably have a slight uh, a slight advantage there with devon tone or controlling it um you know probably over uh you know the line out probably going to be run by george cruz uh, 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 i would say today so you know that that might be an area that they probably have a small bit par- a small bit more of a of a parity um but you know i think scrum time is going to be a proper battle there um, with you know with with Jamie you know I, I actually think Jamie George is a better hooker than um, than Dylan Hartley and uh, you know I, I think this is their best team and as I said he's fallen on it by accident in my opinion not not by intention so you know I, I, that that's why I would be a, a bit more worried all right good stuff Johnny we'll get your prediction ahead of kickoff back to Johnny Murphy very shortly for more from the Aviva Stadium it's a 4:45 start time for Ireland against England already today in the Six Nations. It finished 33-20 to Scotland over Italy. Our rugby coverage is brought to you by Vodafone. Team of us, everyone in. So, in the Premier League, the latest scores. Nathan Redmond has given Southampton a 1-0 lead away from home against Burnley. Chelsea still 2-0 up against Huddersfield. Palace leading Fulham by a goal to nil. And Everton 2-1 down at home against Wolves. Scoreless in the game between Brighton and Watford. Spurs beat Newcastle 1-0 earlier. Hyung Min Sun with the goal. The late game is between Cardiff and Bournemouth. And at the Cardiff City Stadium is one Kevin Kilban. How are you? Whoa! Hey lads, how are you keeping that? Look at that, look at that. Thing of beauty. Hardly, you know that. 42-year-old Kevin. 42-year-old. Just had a stage of chat there about that. 42-year-old Kevin. Happy birthday. We said a uh, happy birthday on Thursday night, but happy birthday once again. Good celebrations. Yeah, you did. You did. Uh, Quiet. A quiet quiet night, mate, really. Yeah, no problems at all. It was all um, low-key. Drove down to Cardiff today. It's the way it is when you hit the 40s. Your line isn't great there, Kev. It's this just a very stu- customary, Saturday, very, very Saturday, stuttery yeah. Kevin Kilban that we're having to uh, put up with. Uh, this game that you're at then, Cardiff against Bournemouth, do you see any way back for Cardiff? No, um, I have to say not really. I think, it, you know, being here today as well with, with the tragedy that's happened over the mm. last couple of weeks as well, there, the, the, there is a sombre mood around the ground. I have to say that coming here... Uh, uh, this afternoon, for the last couple of hours, it, it is uh, as you would well imagine. It, it's very, very downbeat. So I think um, I think that Neil Warnock has called for it. He's called for a, a real uh, response from the supporters coming into this game, and that's what we're all looking at. I think coming here, let's see if Cardiff can get up and running. Do- Bournemouth themselves have got a couple of injury worries. It looks like David Brooks is going to be out. Callum Wilson continues to be out. So it looks like Dominic, Dominic Solanke is going to be starting today for Bournemouth up front, and that's something I think that we'll see how he gets on. It, you know, give been a full regular berth in the starting lineup. Yeah, they spent a lot of money on Dominic Solanke. They've spent a lot of money on young players from Liverpool over the last few years, Bournemouth, and without much success. Jordan Ibe has been in and out of the side after yeah. spending 15 minutes. Yeah. Like Solanke came 
to Liverpool with a big reputation, his performances at the World Cup under 20s. Uh, Chelsea didn't want him to go. And then, well, he didn't get any chances this year, but last season he got opportunities in games, plenty of opportunities off the bench, and just never got that goal maybe that all strikers need, young strikers. From what you've seen of him, like, yeah. does he appear suited to a, a team with the style of football of Bournemouth? I, th I think it probably suits him. It'll be, it'll be a little bit, they do play open, and you know, you would have seen Bournemouth yourself a, a lot, mate. They, they play very open, fullbacks play high and wide, and they go outside. I, I don't necessarily see this type of game suiting him today against the Cardiff side that like to sit in and make it difficult. That's, that's maybe the only thing I'd be looking at maybe today for him. Where's his chances going to come from? But Ryan Fraser, they've got one of the best in the Premier League creating chances. And and, and, uh, and the assist that he's got this year, they do have a number of players that do create. So, I mean, you, you, you imagine at Liverpool, you and I, we saw him many a time, and he seemed to get very nervous when he got into the uh, into the box, didn't he? Because I think because the chances of getting away from him. So I think he was snatching at chances. I think he was almost trying to take shots early when he could have taken an extra touch at times. And that's just uncertainty that comes around a play when things aren't going for you. And that's what Solanke might need to get out of his game, start to find some consistency with You'll be, at the top level which he hasn't done you'll be interested in this Kev another goal at Goodison Park Everton against Wolves Paul Anthony it's Everton 1 Wolves 3 and a thrilling move from the halfway line up into the area of the Everton area a ball played into the area and there was Den Dunker close range just to tap it into the net it's Everton 1 Wolves 3 if Everton had any sense they'd get rid of Marco Silva and put everything in getting somebody like oh. Eddie Howe in as manager somebody who will bring a style of football at the very least that the supporters can get behind? Personally, I wouldn't want to see it just yet. I would at least like to give him to the end of the season. But if the results are going like they are, and again, you talk about style of football, what, what style of football does Marco Silva has? I, I can't picture it in my head. I can't, you know, when you, if, if, I, if I close my eyes and think of an Everton side playing at the moment, it seems a little bit erratic. It's all over the place. Play, players playing off the cuff. It doesn't, doesn't suit the style of football. Would Eddie Howe go to Everton? I don't know. I don't know whether or not he'd leave the South Coast, whether he'd come, uh, go, go to Merseyside. I, I don't know. But Everton at the moment are in a lot of trouble. You know, even today, I think if Wolves do win that game, I think they go five points clear of Everton. And that's the position that Everton want to be getting to. They want to be getting to the top six. That's where they see themselves. I think even this season, I think they saw themselves as seriously challenging top six, trying to break into the top six, first of all. And then... Seriously challenging over the next few years, but it's it, it, they're not finding any consistency, and it's been very poor. It looks it looks to me like things are going wrong, wrong and it's going wrong. But it looks to me like things aren't going right on the pitch, and this just a gay situation can't help as well this week. Yeah, Kev. Uh, unfortunately, the line isn't very good from Cardiff, so uh, I think we'll let you go. Enjoy the game. All right. Cheers, lads. All the best. Talk to you soon. Best. Kevin Coban there at Cardiff against Bournemouth. Another goal to Stamford Bridge, Chelsea Huddersfield, Andrew Cheel. Chelsea 3, Huddersfield 0. Edin Hazard with his second of the afternoon, a really fine goal it was too. Set up by the very impressive Ross Barkley, who's passed short and long to great effect today. Nice ball inside the box. Hazard wriggled around the goalkeeper and slotted home from an acute angle. It's Chelsea 3, Huddersfield 0. They would drive you to mentor Chelsea. Yeah, they're, they're how do you make sense of them? You know, really, it's 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 they're just so so inconsistent. They really really are. Um, mm. Now look, you know, I heard you talking about it earlier on with 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 Leon and and with Stephen Kelly. You know, I don't think Sari has helped his scenario with his with his 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 comments last week. Definitely not. You know how much of a moody dressing room you've got in your hands there. Um, they were only ever going to react one way. So I don't think it was yeah. any surprise when they got hammered the other day. But then I don't know if. Have they had a chat amongst themselves? Has has he kind of laid down the law? They've got the result today, but would you be, would you back them to do well again next week? Do you know, you just don't no, know there's just no consistency. And I mentioned there was a, an article, I think it's in the Telegraph today, about the appointment of Maurizio Sarri and Marcelo Bielsa at, Chel at Leeds and Pep Guardiola, who come with a definite style of football. That you have to back them. You have to go all in. You need to buy the players they want to play for that system, as they did maybe with Jorginho. There is no plan B with them. There is, they are fundamentally set on the style of football they want to play, and regardless of results, regardless of dressing room, they're sticking with that. That's sort of at odds with the way Chelsea is run. Yeah, and I'd, I'd also say there's, there's a very big difference between style of play and style of management. So a manager has two things. He has his style of play, but he's also got his style of management. Um, and unfortunately, these players do not seem to react very, very well to... What do they react well to? Well, that's true. That's true. They, they, 
seem to react to everybody short term and then it fizzles out very, very quickly and they want to do their own thing again. Um, he's in a really, really awkward position there. I don't know how he, he handles them. Assuming he's left there for the rest of the season, I would say it's an almost guarantee that Hazard is gone at the end of the season. Um, is that a bad thing? Because I was after, just going to ask, he is the one constant throughout Mourinho to Conte to what's happening now with Sarri. Somebody who we all love to watch at times and today sounds as though he's putting in one of those performances that puts him on a level maybe just below Ronaldo and Messi and people think he could be the next guy. But it, those performances are few and far between. It's really, and it seem to be coming even more inconsistent. It's really hard to make out his personality because yeah. sometimes he seems this kind of likeable, happy-go-lucky sort of a fella and then other times he seems sullen and sulky and like you had the scenario a couple of months ago where he apologised for his behaviour under the final months months of Mourinho, said he was very disappointed with how he conducted himself and that sounded like a fellow who'd learnt his lessons and was maturing a little bit. But then for all the world Sarri is saying he's 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 repeating that kind of of, of, of you know, I'll do it when I want kind of approach again. He's oh, he's incredibly frustrating because yeah. he's so talented. I think yeah I think for Hazard's sake he probably needs to go too. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean I, I, I think I think I've spoken about this before. You know, he's he is a top level player and I don't think he wants to spend all like the bulk of his best years just at the one club. I think maybe it might be the best for both parties. It's one of these ones where it's an amicable situation that he just he just leaves as much as is possible. Now, whether that's going to solve any real greater problems that exist at Chelsea, I don't know. I mean, he's still the premium player that they do have, and it seems like you know fans there are unhappy with a number of other players like Willian. I think and has it never seems to be a target. Now I could be wrong about that, you know, but the, he seems to be. St still retained a degree of popularity, mm. even if, as you say, he is the one constant through the the sort of roller coaster years that they've had. But even if they get that good result, well, obviously they are going to get that result. Even with well, that they are because actually, we, let's go to Sanford Bridge again. A fourth for Chelsea. Andrew Shield. Chelsea four, Huddersfield nil. It is absolutely riot time at Stamford Bridge. Higuain with his second of the goal of the game, and a real beauty this was too. Set up by uh, Kante and by Barkley and Hazard as well. Three men in the, involved in the build-up and Higuain's right foot shot from the edge of the box, well, maybe even further out than that, absolutely thundered into the top corner. It's Chelsea 4, Huddersfield 0. There's still a big chance they won't make the Champions League. You, know, you, look, you look at United's form at the moment and there's, there's still a hell of a chance that they won't make the Champions League. Um, mm. Where where do they go after that if if they find themselves back out of the Champions League again and on the Europa League? <laughs> yeah. Where do you go? Speaking of where do you go, we were speaking earlier about Bose East Five. Apparently, there was four hundred East Five fans oh. over in Dublin for the game, and they they are there's a riot there. Well, not quite a riot, but they're pretty unhappy because the game's called off four minutes. Watch before. your language. It, it, uh, can, can, is there a riot or is there not? No, a, 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 more of a, a Twitter riot ongoing. Okay over suggesting that Bose should be thrown out of this competition because the first game was called off in November because Bose were out of season. Okay. So it was put back and now 400 of them have come to Dublin and now the game is called off with four minutes notice. So there's some very unhappy East 5 fans. Now apparently there was a rendition in the, in the, the Daily Mount Bar of uh, East 5 fans singing We Hate England More Than You in the direction of the Bose fans <laughs> who in the name of banter responded you've had your chance and you voted no was the chance. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, but there, there's a lot of unhappy Scots out there. Just, uh, we weren't sure enough. how many there was, but there was wow, 400 uh, is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah I, so are you suggesting that the farcical nature of League of Ireland clubs is extending to overseas competitions? Well, uh, there's a lot of games called off in England today too, but four minutes before kickoff, Yeah, it's not ideal. Uh, there seems to be a lot of unhappiness over that. I, 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 there was a pitch inspection called, but I, I don't know when the first inspection was called. I, I, I didn't realise that that game was under threat at all, really, until today. Um, so I don't know how you get around that really I mean the, the conditions Force them happens. to give up home advantage Well they, they're calling that the next game that should be moved to uh, it should be moved to Scotland now that it shouldn't be played that basically Bowers have had two chances to stage the game in Daily Mount and they haven't taken them Joseph O'Brien's 11-10 to favourite La Richborg won the Grade 1 Arkel Novices Chase at the Dublin Racing Festival at Leopardstown Lads you may give out that weather warning again just at Junction 14 and fellas heading your direction in Ireland t-shirts says Jay you are both brave and an idiot if you go to the Aviva Stadium wearing just a t-shirt this evening. You deserve what you get. You deserve James Collins has scored again, by the way, for Luton. Oof. So yeah. three Call him up, mate. Call him up. And, uh, and Aidan McGeady has got the goal for Sunderland against the AFC Wimbledon. Where do you see McGeady fitting in? Uh, I'm in not the squad? Sure. I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised if... if I, he, I mean, he has mentioned What about Wes? He's what about Wes? <laughs> <laughs> He's staying at West Brom, I see I'm saying. That. 
No, it's not going to happen. That won't happen. But um, I don't think Wes would, would allow that to happen. I uh, see Dylan Connolly's been taking a other piece with Dylan Connolly about Dylan yeah. Connolly during the week. Dylan Connolly's gone off in that game uh, and Aidan McGeady just scored in the same minute, effectively. So um, Sunderland won up against the AFC Wimbledon. So it's all gone on in League One for our lads um, and Matt Doherty in the Premier League. We'll do a little League of Ireland, and our League One special yeah. every week. Uh, so the latest scores in the Premier League, Chelsea 4, Huddersfield nil. Chelsea will move back up into the top four, for the time being at least, because both Arsenal and Manchester United are in action tomorrow. Crystal Palace still leading Fulham by goal to nil at Selhurst Park. That'll be a huge win for Palace and a bit of a disaster for Fulham. Everton and Marco Silva are going to be under renewed pressure. They're 3-1 down at home against Wolves. Southampton, thanks to Nathan Redmond, 1-0 up away at Burnley. They've just brought on Peter Crouch for the closing 15 minutes of this game and still scoreless between Brighton and Watford. Quick break and we're back to the Aviva. Football on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same-day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. Lunchtime Live. We're now over a third, yes, of the way through our 100 days of walking and still going strong. And on Monday's Lunchtime Live, I'll be going for a walk and a chat with actress, comedian and presenter Deirdre O'Kane as we tick day 35 off the list. Do you know what I find, actually? I used to say to people, we meet for coffee, and now I always say, well, we meet for coffee and a walk. So I never such a coffee shop anymore. I always take the coffee down the pier with me. Good advice. Lunchtime Live with Kira Kelly. Thanks to Video Doc. Monday at midday. On News Talk. With a new car ad every minute on Done Deal, it's easy to choose one that's right for you. Whether you're planning the ultimate road trip or the school pickup, find the perfect car for any adventure on Done Deal. Discover and drive. Having a flutter? Top tip Quinbet.com. Ireland's newest online sportsbook and casino. For all your horse racing, football, casino, and more, Quinbet has you covered. With live in play markets on mobile, PC, and app. Quinbet.com. Terms and conditions apply. Gamble responsibly. Visit gambleware.ie. Centra is on a mission to help you live every day to its fullest. In store at Centra this week, we have some great healthy offers to help you live well. Like Centra Extra Lean Mince 2 330 gram packs, only six euro. Meridian Smoother Crunchy Peanut Butter 280 gram, better than half price at 178. And Grenade Sports Nutrition Bar 60 gram, better than half price at 123. Log on to Centra.ie to find easy workouts, recipe ideas, and well-being tips. Centra, live every day. Feeling the chill? Try the latest heating technology from Dyson. The Dyson Pure Hot Plus Cool Link intelligently purifies, heats and cools you. For more information and a full demonstration, call to Power City today. For when life feels a little squeezed, Ulster Bank has a wide range of low mortgage rates that could really help. For when you're moving house to get more space or switching your mortgage to get more breathing room. See what you could save. Search Ulster Bank Switch or Move. Ulster Bank. Help for what matters. Warning, if you do not keep up repayments, you may lose your home. Warning, if you do not meet the repayments on your loan, your account will go into arrears. This may affect your credit rating, which may limit your ability to access credit in the future. Maximum loan to value is 90%. Security and insurance required. Product fees may apply. Over 18s and residential mortgages only. Lending criteria, terms and conditions apply. Credit facilities subject to repayment capacity and financial status. Ulster Bank Ireland DAC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Epic savings await. Like our half-price SIM-only sale. For just $14.99 a month, get 20 25 gigs of data, free air sport pack, unlimited calls and texts, all on a 30-day contract. For more, call 1-800-500-300, go in store or visit air.ie. Air, let's make possible. Offer available until 28th of Feb 2019. $14.99 per month for six months, $29.99 per month thereafter. Air Sport Just Mobile app is available on selected mobile plans until 31st of March 2019. Unlimited allowances subject to fair use. For full details, terms and fair usage, see air.ie. Little Emily Murray from 197 River Gardens, Malahide is happy with us saying she's in school most days and her parents are in work. But her piggy bank isn't going anywhere. It's too full, stuffed with pocket money, birthday money and her highly profitable communion. Clean, untraceable, mixed denominations. This little piggy is loaded. No one home? No worries. Get the same home alarm as Emily at phonewatch.ie. Time to own the Audi you've always wanted. Because until February 28th, you can enjoy the Audi A4 with a complimentary style pack, saving you over four and a half thousand euro. So, all you have to do is choose the color. 
call into your local Audi dealer during the 191 sales event. Terms and conditions apply while stocks last. Now you have three great reasons to switch your family to VHI Healthcare. We're leading the way in family healthcare with our member-only access to VHI Swift Care Clinics, faster access to our VHI Pediatric Clinic, and now you can get 25% off all kids under 18 on all our one plans until February 28th. Switch today. Call 1890 or search VHI One Plans. VHI Healthcare. When you need us, we're there. Terms and conditions apply. VHI Healthcare DAC trading as VHI Healthcare is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland and is tied to VHI Insurance DAC for health insurance in Ireland. A train approaches the platform. For some, it's just the 6.45 to Houston. But for you, it's an office on wheels. Here, the canteen comes to you. The person sitting opposite you isn't just a passenger, they're a colleague. And regardless of what your business card says, from the moment you step on board, you're the boss. Rediscover the joy of the train. Great fares for business customers at irishrail.ie. Can I get a receipt? Yep. This is it. After years have been rolled up within an inch of my life, it's finally happening. I'm free! What? Oh, you might have me for a minute, buddy, but not for long. Where's it gonna be? The wallet? The bag? Or the pocket, eh? There's your first mistake. This won't hold me for long, pal. Receipts have a mind of their own. Go paperless and manage your travel expenses online with My Taxi Business. Make the smarter choice at MyTaxi.com. Football on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same-day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. You're welcome back. We will hopefully be across to the Aviva in a moment. Just have an issue with Johnny Murphy's line, but we're about four minutes away from kickoff Ireland against England on a bitterly cold day in Dublin. Already today, Scotland beat Italy 33 20. Uh, Dan McDonald and Shane Keegan are alongside me in studio. 53106 for the texts. We're live on all our social channels as well. It's been an uh, interesting enough afternoon in the Premier League. Chelsea bouncing back from their 4 0 defeat against Bournemouth leading Huddersfield by four goals to nil. Uh, Huddersfield on 11 points after 25 games. They are 12 points from safety. They're going down. The, the bottom three are going down. The three, the three that are there at the moment, Nathan, there's, there's not a hope of any of them getting out of that. It is, as far as I'd be concerned. I know Burnley are the ones, I think, just above them, but I, I can't see how any of those three get out of the trouble mm. they're in at the moment, to be honest. There does look to be a definite gulfing class between, say, Palace, Southampton, Newcastle and Burnley above the bottom three. I think Newcastle, that was a massive win for them during the week. They were the one, you felt if they became enveloped in like, pure and crisis and mode. Yeah, and he went. But no, I think Burnley are more than good enough to steer to. I mean, Fulham are the one that... They actually didn't do a mad amount of transfer day business. I thought they might do something. I know they did bits and bobs, and the one or two deals I think fell through. They had the scope, being a London club, you know, to get bodies in and maybe go on a bit of a run. But I, I just don't know who above them is going to drop enough points to really get to get into it. I mean, you're, I mean, Brighton are going to be fine. They'll get enough. So I think those three probably are. The championship promotion race is definitely more interesting than the. The Premier League relegation one, I think, at this stage. I was uh, I was listening to you as I was driving in along. Did, uh, you were of, of the impression that Benitez is staying on at Newcastle, is he? Yeah, that seems to be the expectation now. Now he he said that he was trying to play it down in his press conference yesterday that oh, even if they hadn't signed uh, the player, that that didn't mean he was going. And the fact that they have and they won the game doesn't mean that he's staying. But it looks as though he's definitely going to stay until the end of the season, and that he may sign a one-year contract extension. That, that would have surprised me, you know, he's, he's again, his, his name is, you know, he's done very, very well there in terms of it looks like he's almost certainly going to keep them up, mm. and I don't know. Where just, is Benitez now? Like, where, where does Benitez lie in well, here's one for manager you. rankings? If, if, if we were talking about Everton and them having a poor result again, like, if, if Silva went, would, would Benitez not be... I'm not sure if he would fit the... Well, he lives the, on Merseyside still. No, he, like he, he would tick a lot of the boxes, I'm not objecting. I think he has said before that he, now, again... Mm. You say something at the time and yeah. money talks that because obviously of his history with Liverpool, he wouldn't. Really? Uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's quickly go to the Aviva because Johnny Murphy is on the line. Moments away from kickoff, Johnny. Sounds like there's, a, as you'd expect, a hell of an atmosphere. Yeah, big atmosphere. A uh, lot of fireworks beforehand. Uh, Farrell just has the ball about to kick off. So giving them an opportunity to get stuck into Ireland with an early hit and, uh, and probably from an England perspective, try and get into the game early. Give us your prediction. Uh, Ireland by three. All right, 
It's been down bit by bit as the, uh, as the few days have gone on. Plenty more to come from Johnny Murphy between now and 7 o'clock. We're here all the way till the very end of Ireland against England, which is just about to get underway at the Aviva Stadium. Let's go to Cardiff because the late game is between Cardiff and Bournemouth. Graeme Lloyd is on the line. Afternoon, Graeme. Hello, Nathan. Uh, obviously a very sad atmosphere around Cardiff today. This should have been the game where their record signing Emiliano Sala made his debut. Obviously very much not the case. Uh, what's the atmosphere been like? Yes, as, uh, as you say, for, I mean, for the last 55 years, Nathan, I don't know whether you know, Cardiff has been twinned with Nantes. Now following the disappearance of Emiliano Sala, the two cities are bound together by tragedy. Mm. And before kickoff today, the Welsh club will be paying tribute to their record signing, who will never make an appearance for them, but who will always have a special place in their hearts. Um, as you probably know, his family are preparing to resume their privately funded investigation into his ill-fated flight from France. And Cardiff supporters will observe a moment of silent reflection for the Argentinian striker and the plane's pilot, David Ibbotson. Um, in terms of the football, manager Neil Warnock, who admits his players must, quote, move mountains to recover from the experience, he makes one change to his struggling side after their 2-1 defeat at Arsenal on Tuesday. Harry Arter can't play against his parent club, so Josh Murphy replaces him. And £4 million new boy Leandro Bakuna is on the bench. As for Bournemouth, they're in 10th place in the Premier League. They'll be looking for a hat-trick of Premier League wins in a week. And manager Eddie Howe also makes one change to the side which started the 4-0 thumping of Chelsea on Wednesday. David Brooks is replaced by Dominic Solanke, who makes his debut. It's bound to be an emotional day here in South Wales. And we're all set for Cardiff against Bournemouth at the Cardiff City Stadium. And the kickoff is 5.30, Nathan. All right, thanks a lot for that, Graham. We'll keep you up to date with that game through the course of the evening. It is England in possession and just inside the Irish 22 at Lansdowne Road. Just a minute gone, still scoreless there. Another goal at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea against Huddersfield. Andrew Cheel. Chelsea 5, Huddersfield nil. Kachunga an own goal, although the... PA system has credited to David Luiz with a powerful header from a corner, but it definitely took a big deflection off Kachunga near the goal line, changed direction, and that made a huge difference. The goalkeeper was nowhere near it. It's Chelsea 5, Huddersfield 0. And a goal at Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace against Fulham, Mike Lawrence. Crystal Palace 2, Fulham 0. Jeffrey Schlupp has sealed it for the home side. Debut substitute Michi Bashuai had a hand into it, his shot parried away by Rico in the Fulham goal into the path of Schlupp who fired home from close range. In the closing stages here Crystal Palace 2, Fulham 0 Well, 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 not the start Ireland wanted at the Aviva Stadium there's been a score Johnny Yeah, uh, England started very brightly they uh, long kick off uh, good box kick to out and then they played two trick plays, they looked like they were setting up a, a line out went over the back to Manu Tulangi, he carried the ball really well and then they, uh, they ran kind of a double switch back into the middle of that rook, held the ball for about 70 seconds and then went over on the edge there was actually a really good dominant hit on Vunapola um, they tried to choke him, keep him up in the air, uh, finished the choke tackle he managed to get the offload which kind of created a bit more of a, a, a staggered line, it didn't give Ireland to get a full line set to come forward and then they had numbers on the edge and there was a bit of a defensive error uh, probably from Keith there, from uh, just out wide on the on the right hand side shot in led an easy 2v1 two, uh, two on the edge so not a fantastic start from an Ireland perspective but uh, England obviously by what they, they've started in the first 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 two minutes they've come to play and they've, they've used a bit of imagination first off all right, thanks for that, Johnny. Owen Farrell stepping up to the conversion, and he just curls it in uh, straight between the posts. So England, dream start at the Aviva Stadium. They lead by seven points to nil. Johnny May crashing over in the corner for the English. So they lead Ireland 7-0, three minutes gone. Uh, full times to come in just a moment from the Premier League. Calmo Dada among the goals. Excellent goal from Callum. Well, I don't know if it's an excellent goal. I saw an excellent montage of Call Callum O'Dada. Where he picked the ball up in the edge of his own area. It was sort of like George Way score, for AC Milan back in the 90s. According to live score, he was F. He, 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 it was a fantastic goal. No, he, I mean, during the week, I saw a montage of O'Dada clips. I mean, I know he's been having a good time, and I saw him play a couple of weeks ago against Forrest. He was excellent, but he has scored again today for Bristol City. He's got a great goal last week against Bolton, and he's got the goal today. I've also had someone from Bowes in touch me to point out that they actually uh, they offered to play East 5 on a couple of dates and they were turned down by East 5 so there you go 
Oh, East Fife this East. is turning into this, quite this, a rivalry, this, oh, isn't it? East Fife feud is really oof, taking off. Oof, where uh, where will it end? Where, where will it end? That's what we all want yeah. to know. Is this the quarter final? Uh, so I think it might even be the round. I think like everyone else is in the quarter final, but Bowes and East Fife are like in a previous round. They're mm. like uh, they're trapped in a lift and they just can't get out of it here. You were saying it could actually have an effect on league games. The first game, of the, yeah. If Bowes had won today, their 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 big kickoff against Finn Harps wouldn't take place because of the Iron Brew Cup. So Finn Harps' glorious return to the Premier Division delayed by a week because of the Iron Brew Cup. Doesn't really seem right to me, but um, we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. There's a few that good, but Colin okay, Modena okay. is fine. Also, uh, I see Sheffield Wednesday got a 98 minute goal away to Ipswich for Steve Bruce, which is nice because Bruce obviously got a bit of ludicrous abuse, yeah, and yeah. grief from uh, Danny Murphy and Rude Hollis. Um, well, that conversation was very much a football's not real life, you know, it's a world of its own, and you have to sacrifice everything else. And yeah, we talk about mental health and things like that, but we. When it comes to it, you just got to turn up for work. Well, they would strike you as fellas who live in somewhat of a bubble, those two. I don't mm. think there'd, be, there'd no. be too much love for them really coming from any uh, direction, would there? But um, no. no, it was good to see as Alex Bruce initially and even Steve Bruce, I think, himself came out with, it, with a bit of a reply to it himself in the last day or two, didn't he? Obviously yeah. a very sad day in Cardiff um, with the search still ongoing, ongoing for Emiliano Sala. It, it has shone a bit of a light over the last few days on agents and how these sort of deals come together. And Listen... Maybe everybody involved in football knows that this is how these things happen and there's nothing actually wrong with it. But William Mackay, who was the agent involved, who wasn't actually his agent to start with, it seems was working on behalf of Cardiff to try and get a striker in, or was approaching the player. And the basically the emails have come out that he sent Salah around yeah, at the time. Emiliano, my name's William Mackay. We're not interested in your personal belongings, finances, holidays, babysitting. It's not our business. We make transfers. More than 600 until today, from Didier Drogba to Anelka, Payet, Seri, and Guisa. So, uh, listen, he's straight up from the front. We just want to bring you to a better club and make some money off the, I'll be the honest side of with it. You here. Here's what we want. I, yeah. yeah I don't, there's a line, isn't there, about not, not being a father. Not being a father figure. Father no. yeah. 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 Let, let us introduce you to the way we operate and how we came to this Cardiff City saga. We work for clubs in France and for players who want to be transferred to England. As far as you're concerned, we've talked to all the clubs, including Manchester, Chelsea, Liverpool. We think you could end up at such clubs. We approach Nantes, as we do with many other players, to obtain the mandate of sale. We're not preventing you from working with another agent, but most players are very satisfied with our mediation. We do not say we are like a father to a son to our players. No, if you had not been a footballer, these people would not be interested in you. Yeah. William McCoy, I think do William McCoy's two sons, I think they're on the books of Cardiff as well. I well, one of whom Definitely has left. Them anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who I think he left on uh, transfer gone deadline to, day. Gone from Cardiff to Chesterfield mm. in the conference. Not your obvious but, though. But also, William McCoy previously, I remember speaking to Paul Keegan before, League of Ireland player, who was at Doncaster, and he was at Doncaster at a time when William McCoy had an incredibly close relationship with Doncaster. And I think they had Pascal Chimbonda and like Habib Bailey. They had lads flying in from France for games. They were in for like a couple of days a week training and then playing at the weekend. So, William McCoy. Kai seems to be an agent who um, he almost tends to have a close relationship with a club mm, and yeah. then moves on to the next, you know, another club over but a period it, of time. In a way, actually, is he just being more honest than the vast majority of agents here? He goes on to say, in the end, they're only interested in the money, what we all want a lot of, of course. That's why we like to work with just the clubs. No sentiment, we're just doing business. But when I when I came across it at first yesterday, I, I was initially going on the assumption that they had, that these emails had been leaked and mm. that they had been picked up. But uh, reading up on it, it's, it's William McKay himself has, has released them and put them out there. Well, I think they were trying to explain the circumstances behind the, the booking of the, of the plane yeah. and that it was a pilot that they used on a regular basis that he had assumed would be flying the plane, but he then got somebody else to fly the plane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but 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 he's. I, I, but I suppose the point I'm making is he he doesn't. I would think he doesn't really have any problem with him appearing in the manner that he appears in those emails. That it is cutthroat and it is very much business. Um, I suppose he's he's kind of saying there are all these people who will tell you that tell he, you they he love you, yeah. and stars to them, and and look at least we're honest. It's business. Look, it's there's no doubt about it whatsoever. It's 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 a murky world, isn't it? I think mm. everybody and anybody knows that. There's been quite a few books actually released on kind of the transfer world and the dealings of it and all that of, of recent sort of yeah. this, you know. I think I mean I think you know it, it always surprises people that sometimes people on the outside might have a view that the agent works for the player, and obviously the the concept of the agent working for a player is almost old fashioned now. You've got agents working for clubs. You know they're trying to get mm. players in and out of clubs. They're not. They're not the old school. You know the the, the you know the what was the name? Of the guy who used to smoke the cigar. Like you know working with his clients. Yeah. You know and quite often Eric that, that, that yeah. 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 yeah yeah people look at the the agent as Mister Ten Percent and the player pays the agent ten percent. Whereas actually now what happens with a lot of clubs is they say 
we want to get 200 grand off our weekly wage. Can you get rid of five players? If you get rid of five players, you'll get 200 grand. Yeah. And then the lack of regulation, because he says in that email that whoever is deemed to be your representative, and then I think he says, can be your mother if you want, will make a million out of this. Like, that's absolutely incredible. Yeah, mm. yeah it's, a wild, it's a complete Wild West stuff, but um, as you say, that is the established climate. You know, they, they are the laws of engagement, and people who go into it really play those games because you sort of have to. You know, you, you, and, and you can imagine that you have a situation where, uh, say, a player A has a, a, a loyal agent who's been good to him over a period of time, yet they might find they can't get any deals done because the club will only deal with this fella. Mm. And, and you hear those instances that actually the noble agent, I mean, there, there are such things, or it could be a family member or someone, okay, they might be in it for, their, for a certain amount of gain, but they actually find they get shafted when it comes down to it because there's a small number of super agents that actually control what happens. Look, you, you, know, it, you know it must be a mess when, when FIFA or UEFA, whichever it was, went in, tried to impose regulation and tried to put some sort of standardisation on it all and very, very quickly gave up and says, oh, here, listen, and just hmm. back away from it and says, let you off to yourselves, you know. Ireland have their first penalty of the game at the Aviva. Johnny Sexton just tried a cross-field ball. He was caught late by Vinnie Pola. I think the penalty was actually awarded just before that. England leading 7-0 through that very early try from Johnny May. There's just over 10 minutes gone. This is fairly standard for Sexton, straight between the posts. He's 29 metres out. You would expect this is sort of bread and butter stuff for Sexton, which would reduce it back to a four-point game. No doubt it was a blistering start for England. Sexton steps up. No problem at all for Johnny Sexton and Ireland are up and running. England 7, Ireland 3 going up on 11 minutes gone at the Aviva Stadium. We'll be back to Johnny Murphy for an update shortly. Let's go through the full times then in the Premier League starting at the Amex Stadium. Brighton against Watford. Alan Lewis. It's finished. Brighton nil, Watford nil. but Brighton will see this as a missed opportunity to get their first league win of 2019. Lacardia and Prava had the best of the chances in the first half for Brighton while Dini went close for the visitors. Only the brilliant goalkeeping from Ben Foster prevented Brighton getting a goal in the second half. First, the fingertip save from Lacardia, then with his feet to deny Shane Duffy's overhead kick and finally saving well at the feet of Florin Adone. Will Hughes and Basuma almost won it for Watford and Brighton respectively right at the end, but it wasn't to be. It's finished Brighton nil, Watford nil. Yeah, so a scoreless draw at the Amex between Brighton and Watford. Brighton are on 27 points. They're eight points clear of the relegation zone and they bring an end to their losing streak, but as we heard, there, it could have been a whole lot better for Chris Hewton's side. Next up, we're off to Stamford Bridge, where it was a very good day for Maurizio Sarri and for Chelsea, and for their goal difference as well in the battle for the top four. Watching their victory against Huddersfield was Andrew Cheel. Chelsea 5, Huddersfield 0. Chelsea boss Maurizio Sarri responded to the 4-0 defeat at Bournemouth with four team changes. The players responded one better with a 5-0 win. The result was never in doubt. Higuain hit two, one close range, one long range. Hazard also got two, including one penalty. And with Ross Barkley, very impressive in midfield. Chelsea made chance after chance. Huddersfield were never a threat. And a late Louis header deflected off Kachunga to make it Chelsea 5, Huddersfield 0. So Chelsea move on to 50 points after 25 games. They're three clear of Arsenal, five clear of Manchester United. We have both those sides in action tomorrow. United away against Leicester at five past two. Uh, Andy Reid and Stephen Doyle will be at that. And then myself and Mark Lawrence will be at the Etihad for Arsenal's trip to Manchester City at half past four. But Chelsea, uh, it's going to be very tight in that battle for the top four and those five goals may prove very important indeed. Next up to Selhurst Park. Good day for Palace. They were at home against Fulham. Mike Lawrence. Crystal Palace 2, Fulham 0. It's an important home win for Palace while Fulham are still in trouble and yet to win on the road. Palace were gifted the lead on 24 minutes when Fulham defender Saras Christie handled in the box. Luka Milivojevic nailed the spot kick despite Fulham keeper Rico getting a hand to it. Fulham barely troubled the Palace keeper Gita. Mitrovic heading wide early on. Jeffrey Schlupp sealed it from close range late on, pouncing on substitute Michi Batchewai's parried shot to make it Crystal Palace 2, Fulham 0. England down to 14 men at the Aviva Stadium. Tom Curry's just been sin bin for a high tackle on Keith Earls. It was definitely very late. I'm not quite sure how high it was. It looked as though it was below the shoulders, but hey, who's complaining? Uh, Tom Curry is in the sin bin for the next 10 minutes for England. It's still England 7. Ireland 3. I don't know. That is never a high tackle. 
it was uh, it was late. There's no question it was very late, but um, and maybe that was the deciding factor. Uh, what came up was that it was for a Shane high. Shane Mentor Rugby School. You can tell us, Shane, what happened. <laughs> what's what's happening here, Shane? Tell me, what, please explain. No, no, most definitely not. Do I? <laughs> Yeah, I went to a school where uh, I was saying where playing rugby was compulsory in first year. Now, do I look like I am built for playing rugby, despite your Peter Stringer comments? <laughs> the only trait we share is uh, our baldness, that's for sure. So, yeah, played, I think, one game of rugby ever broke my wrist. That was the end of my short-lived rugby career, so it was not It was about as impressive as your football career from Monday. Oh, <laughs> oh. If that's a fair comparison, that's a fair comparison. He was showing out the barbs in the commentary. Well, I, yeah. I, there was no problem there. And I, I don't know if you heard um, the, such an esteemed uh, opinion as John Giles said, I was one of the better players. Well, I mean, he's just been nice. No, I, have you met John Giles? Yeah. When it comes to football, yeah. he doesn't just throw out the platitudes. Ah, yeah, but he's like... He, no, no, he, he, no, he, he was he, deadly serious. He has to speak with you on the Thursday. You only played half the game, Nathan. You exactly. Were in, you were in goal for half of that time. No, I was only in goal for five minutes. I had some of the nicest touches out there, Dan. Mm. Okay. I'm impressed with Dan, Dan's shimmy. You have quite a, a shimmy on you. Don't don't watch his hips, you'll be gone the wrong way, you know. It's, <laughs> don't look at, the balls, don't don't look at Dan's hips, hips in lie. general. <laughs> the hips don't lie. Yours do, that's the genius of it. That is the genius of it. Listen... Some late drama, a man whose hips don't lie, he's still making the impact. 38, Peter Crouch, Burnley against Southampton, let's get the full time. A 94th minute penalty from Ashley Barnes rescued a point for Burnley in dramatic circumstances. Southampton took the lead in the 56th minute when Nathan Redmond found space 25 yards out and drove a fantastic low yard shot past Heaton and it looked like it would give the Saints all three points but deep into stoppage time Jack Stevens handled the ball in the box. A penalty was awarded. The first one Burnley have won in the Premier League since April 2017 and Ashley Barnes slotted it home to secure a vital point. Full time at Turf Moor. It finished Burnley 1, Southampton 1. So Southampton 16th, Burnley 17th remain just outside the relegation zone but they're now five points ahead of Cardiff City that an important goal there for Burnley right at the very end well I can only imagine what the reaction was like at Goodison Park when the full time whistle went between Everton and Wolves Paul Anthony Wolves take the three points from an entertaining game they saw the visitors go in at the break leading with goals from Neves and Jimenez either side of a 25 yard screamer from Andre Gomez in the second half Everton had 70% of possession but they couldn't make it count and when Ndonka scooped the ball into the event net to make it 3-1 you sense the points were in the bag Rickalson and Zuma came close to cutting the deficit both efforts going narrowly wide and the game ended Everton 1, Wolves 3 all right, so that's you up to date with all the full-time scores in the Premier League. Spurs beat Newcastle in the early game. Cardiff against Bournemouth is the late kickoff at half past five. We'll run you down through all the championship scores and talk to all our reporters as well. And keep you up to date with everything that's happening at the Aviva, where England lead Ireland 7-3, 15 minutes gone, but England have another seven and a half minutes to go with just 14 men. Tom Curry in the Simbin for a very late hit on Keith Earls. Can they keep Ireland out, though? It's a scrum in the middle of the pitch at the moment. Dan, thank you as always. Thank you, Shane, Nathan. Shane, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, we'll uh, have to do a full League of Ireland preview next Sunday, next Saturday. I think Johnny Ward's in New York as well. Oh! So, yeah. Is he is he dedicated at all to the League of Ireland? I see. It's, life has changed from the last you know, He's loved up. Months. Loved up. Rugby man. Loves rugby. I mean, at this He stage, mightn't even be going to League of Ireland games on a Friday night. He'll be in on a Saturday going, this time was at the Pro 14 last evening. Yeah. I don't know well, what's going on. the trends, doesn't he? Yeah, well, that's it. He's that moving towards it. middle age at pace. <laughs> all right, lads, cheers for that. Uh, we're here all the way till 7 o'clock. Don't forget, because we'll be keeping you right up to date with everything that's happening. Ireland 3, England 7 is the latest.